It's been a little while, um, but vacation's over. Sort of. It's the last day of vacation, so figured I'd get back to streaming um, by opening this box of magic cards. So, yeah. Um, I'm really fucking old, and I haven't played magic in like 25 years, which is a long time. So, uh, yeah. Um, I'm going to go ahead and open up these cards um, because I got curious about magic again after 25 years away. When I saw that they had the Dungeons and Dragons Adventures in the Forgotten Realms set, I was like, hmm, I mean, maybe. And then they started releasing cards and they started showing off all the art, and I was like, ah, it's pretty cool. And then the next thing I know, I'm buying like a commander deck and trying the game again. And a good friend of mine like made me like uh, my own commander deck. And I don't know, I've really been enjoying it uh, quite a bit. So um, yeah, I they didn't get me when they did the Ravnica setting. Um, they got me curious with the Strixhaven, but when they announced that they were doing the uh, Adventures in the Forgotten Realms, and they had, I mean, I mean, fucking everybody's here. Apparently Xanthar's here, Dritz is here, Cadabri's here, Claw Yilia Matar is here. I mean, fucking everybody is here. So I am, I am very, very curious. So, um, I went ahead and pre-ordered a box from my local game store. They came in on Friday and now I'm going to go ahead and take a look at them. So I don't know a hundred percent everything that's going on in modern magic, uh, and I'm probably going to be shocked by every card that I read because 25 years have passed. So there's been a little power creep in the game. So I'm probably going to look at some of these cards and be like, the fuck? Um, but that's just kind of what it is. So um, the first card, which I got for pre-ordering a box, is the Vorpal Sword, which looks pretty dope. Uh, it's some pretty nice uh, art. The art apparently goes over the borders on some of these cards, which, again, I'm not trying to sound like a space alien that just encountered magic, um, but this is all, all, all a lot of this is all new to me. So it's pretty dope. Um, I can't imagine you'd ever get to use its really cool ability. Um, it's pretty cheap to get it out into play. It makes your guy stronger, gives him death touch, but then it also has the ability that if you spend eight mana. And then the creature with the uh, Vorpal Sword hits your opponent. The opponent automatically loses the game. Um, but given that it's an artifact card, it's probably going to get destroyed pretty quick. Because I don't think anybody wants to accidentally lose the game because something was able to hit them uh, one time. But pretty awesome. Alright, so let's open this thing up and see what's going on here. So, okay. Uh, plastic is gone. All right, we got handsome Xanathar um, on the box. It's looking pretty cute. Xanathar's goldfish. There was a whole thing, chamomile and Xanathar. It was a whole thing. Anyways, you don't want to mess around with this guy. Um, all right, so inside is a bunch of packs. That's cool. All right, so let's fold this, I don't know, down and over. Yeah, there we go. And I guess we'll just pick up one and see what fucking happens. All right. So, yeah, it feels really weird to be opening boosters after 25 years. So, okay, there's um a Knoll, but he has, like, normal stats. So I'm not sure what's going on with that. He's got, like, adorable art. Is this, like, a crossover? Am I just supposed to have this for... For regular Dungeons and Dragons, not 100% sure what's going on. As far as Knolls go, he's kind of derpy looking, but, I mean, I don't know. Knolls got done dirty in 5e anyways. Uh, let's see, we got uh, Land. Yeah. It's just a fun art card. That's all it is. It's just an art card. It doesn't, doesn't do anything. Oh, Cadenix is here. He's my guide to the modern world. All right, what do we got here? We got Classic Art Owlbear. 4-4 uh, four, four, Trample Keen Senses. When Owlbear enters the battlefield, you can draw a card. 
It is creature type bird bear. I guess that means it counts as a bird and a bear? Or does it only count as a bird bear? I don't know. I don't play green, so I may never know for sure. Uh, let's see what else we got. We got a... You come to the Knoll camp. Okay. Uh, choose one. Intimidate them. Up to two target creatures can't block this turn. Fend them off. Target creature gets plus three, plus one until the end of turn. Oh, that's cool. They just, like, reskinned a multi-choice instant as, um, like a choose-your-own-adventure. That's kind of dope. All right. Sweet. Uh, let's see. Sylvan Shepherd is a human druid. Vigilance. Uh, whenever they attack, roll a d20. Uh, I've heard that these cards do require you to roll dice. So this is the first one we're seeing that requires you to roll dice. Um, you gain one life, you gain two life, or you gain five life. Um, that's kind of spicy. All right. Uh, let's see. We've got Inspiring Bard, who is an elf and also a bard. When Inspiring Bard enters the battlefield, choose one. Bardic Inspiration. Target creature gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. Song of Rest, you gain three life. I mean, it's all right. Um, I mean, I know there's a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of elf cards out there already that are way better than that, especially for the mana cost. Holy shit! But you know, whatevs. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's the problem. If they're rolling their spin down dice, those have a different uh, numeric layout than a normal die. So. Yeah. It's all about it's all about the crossover though. Get get people that are into one kind of drug to try a different kind of drug. Uh wild shape. Choose one until the end of the turn target creature you control ha has base power and toughness becomes that creature type and gains that ability. Okay. Target creature you control that has base power and toughness. So uh, it's a creature that has to have base power and toughness. All right. A uh, turtle with hexproof, a spider with reach, and an elephant with trample. That's kind of cute. I can kind of already see how the more hardcore magic players are like, this particular set's not super strong. Um, but, I don't know, I think it's pretty neat. Alright, druid class. Uh, so I think class attaches to a creature, like off to the side. So like, inspiring bard is now also this class, which I think is kind of a cool mechanic. So then they can also have equipment cards uh, on top of them. Yeah. So let's see. Oh, right, the class. Um, hmm, here we go. So Druid class, gain the next level as a sorcery to add its ability. Uh, whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, gain one life. So how do you level it up? Gain the next level as a sorcery. Does that mean you pay the cost again during your sorcery phase? Maybe. Um, you may play an additional land on each of your turns. When this class becomes level 3, target land you control becomes a creature with haste. And this creature's power and toughness are equal to the number of lands you control. And it's still a land. I mean, that's... That's pretty fucking dope. I mean, it's a lot to keep track of, but, you know. Gretchen Titchwillow. Oh, you pay the cost next to the level to level up. Oh, those little tiny symbols there. I'll have to bring my readers with me to play uh, play magic. Yeah, there we go. Oh, so it's pretty priced to go up to level 3. Still pretty cool, though. All right, Gretchen Titchwillow, which is quite a name. Uh, you, she can draw a card. You may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. Well, that's dope. And she's a legendary creature, so I guess she could be a commander, though that's not a very exciting commander. Well, no, it's, it's whatever, I guess. Uh, let's keep going. Uh, we got our first Gerblin. Battlecry Gerblin. Uh, let's see... Goblins you control get plus one, plus zero, and gain haste until the end of the turn. And since it's um, got the little dot dot, I guess you could do that as much as you want. Pack tactics. Whenever Battlecry Goblin attacks, if you attack with creatures with a total power of six or greater, 
create a 1-1 red goblin creature token that's tapped and attacking. Oh, that's kind of neat. That's a cool way to do pack tactics. Um, I feel like you kind of shit on the kobolds a little bit there, but oh, that's okay, I guess. Um, hopefully the kobolds get some cool shit. All right, we got a uh, white dragon here. Uh, the white dragon is 4-4, four, four, and despite being an ice-based creature, obviously they had to make it white, because Magic the Gathering has, has white mana. Um, anyways, it's flying, cold breath, when white dragon enters the battlefield, tap target creature and opponent controls. That creature doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. That seems like a common thing for ice attacks in Magic the Gathering nowadays. It's a little price um, for 4-4 four, four flying with an enter the battlefield ability, but it's not terrible. So, all right. I don't really know a lot about modern magic, so I probably shouldn't be rating any of these cards. I should just be reading them and being like, ah, magic. Uh, Paladin class. So I guess you can't multi-class because they all go off to the right of your character, but maybe you can. I don't see, I don't think there's a rule that says you can't. So you could be like a druid paladin. That'd be kind of nuts. Anyways, um, let's see. Paladin class. Spells your opponent cast during your turn cost one more to cast. Uh, it's all right. Uh, creatures you control get plus one, plus one. Decent, I guess. Whenever you attack until end of turn, target attacking creature gets plus one, plus one for each other attacking creature and gains double strike. Well, that's pretty cool. Oh, man, you could just throw every level or every class into one character. That's dope. Uh, then we got this card that is shiny. It is called Hill Giant Herd Gorger. And he a big boy. 7-6, six, 6 mana. When Hill Giant Herd Gorger enters the battlefield, you get 3 life. Meh. Uh, and then we've got the Dungeon of the Mad Mage. Uh, Yawning Portal. Uh, I don't actually know how the dungeons work. So... That's a thing. Uh, you gain one life, and then you get to scry one, and then I guess you choose a path to take. Um, and then it basically spoils the whole dungeon, which is kind of nuts. Um, but it it's really neat. I wonder, are they? Is it turn based? Like every upkeep? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Red. Like the art from this set, we're replacing like all of our all of our tokens are getting upgraded. Like the art from this set is beautiful it, it's so beautiful i'm not 100 percent sure how dungeons work i think every upkeep you get to advance like one down the dungeon that's what i so i think is happening um but they look really cool but i'm not 100 percent sure how they work so all right let's uh let's open another one i guess let's do this thing all right we have the Atropol, or the Atropol, which is uh, an undead um, baby. An undead um, a, a aborted fetus of a god. When you have to play a card that allows you to venture the dungeon... Oh. Hmm. Oh, and look, it's got um, a gerblin on the back. I didn't even notice. So this is, like, not a card that you would draw. This is a card you'd put out if you could go into a dungeon. Got it. Okay. All right. So this guy's kind of dope looking. He doesn't seem to require anything, so he must be a token. Yeah. So we're at the bottom. Let's switch over to the top. All right. So we got an art card. It's just uh, Mints and Boo. Uh, they're looking awfully cute. Uh, I remember first running into this guy. In Baldur's Gate 1, when it came out the first time, that's how old I am. And I installed it with its 10 to 12 CDs. Anyways, um, yeah, that's a really cool art card, I guess. And then on the back, it just says Art Series. Mm -hmm. Alright, then we got a Schwamp. Cool. A little Baldur's Gate Schwamp. What is this? What is this shit? Um... Dungeon Module 7 Evolving Wilds, an adventure for characters 1 to 4. It is a land 
that is an old school adventure module, I feel like this is incredibly unfair because it's attacking my nostalgia like really hard right now. I'm in like a very emotional place seeing some of these cards. Um, sacrifice, Evolving Wilds, search your library for a basic land card, put it on the battlefield, tapped, and then shuffle. I mean, yeah. Cool. All right, we got here, uh, you come to the Knoll Camp. We've already seen that one. Uh, let's see, Sylvan Shepherd. We've already seen that one. Elf Bard, we already saw that one. Uh, choose your weapon. Uh, choose one, two weapon fighting. Double target creature's power and toughness until the end of the turn. Archery, this spell deals five damage to target creature with flying. Oh, that's pretty neat. Okay, that's cool. Uh, Brunor Battlehammer. Fuck yeah. I I love this guy. He's, he's my guy in uh, Dark Alliance. Uh, Brunor Battlehammer. Looking very young. Very young and very spry and slim. Damn, this must have been taken... This painting must have been done when he was very young. Um, let's see. Legendary creature, dwarf warrior. Relatively cheap to summon. And he's red-white. Which I like red-white. Um, each creature you control gets plus two, plus zero for each equipment card attached to it. That sounds like a lot of work. Uh, you may pay zero rather than pay the equip cost for the first equip ability you have to activate each turn. Oh. And he's 5-3. Holy shit. Um, that's not bad for four mana. Wow. I don't know if I would build a whole commander deck around, uh, that concept, but he's pretty cool. All right, good for you, Bruner. Good for you. Uh, let's see. Equipment. Plate. Equipped creature gets plus three, plus three, and has ward one. Whenever equipped creature becomes the target of a spell or ability, an opponent controls uh, counter it unless that player pays one. No, oh, okay, that's kind of cool. Uh, equip three. This ability costs one less to activate for each other equipment that you control. Oh, that's kind of cool. All right, I feel like it's pretty cool that it was right next to Bruner, since it's, I guess, meant for him. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Gloom Stalker. Oh, dang. Dwarf Ranger. As long as you've completed a dungeon, Gloom Stalker has double strike. Oh, that's kind of cool. All right. I also like dwarves being more than just, like, axe and hammer. I feel like that this dude's double wielding war picks. I mean, that's that's dope. That's some dope art for a dwarf. All right, what do we got here? Knoll Hunter. Uh, this creature is a knoll. It has pack tactics. Whenever Knoll Hunter attacks, uh, if you attack with creatures with a total power of six or greater, put a plus one plus one counter on Knoll Hunter. Oh, so pack tactics works differently. It's triggered the same way, but it has different effects based on the monster that triggered it. That's pretty cool. Alright, what do we got here? Uh, Vorpal Sword, which we had the fancy special one already. Um, but now we have another one. I guess to, I don't know, not be as cool as the fancy art one. Uh, let's keep going. Uh, we got a shiny Mimic. The Mimic is an artifact treasure. That's weird. That's a weird flex. Okay, let's see what it does. Um, it's pretty cheap. You can sacrifice it to get one mana of any color, or you can spend two mana to have it become a shapeshifter artifact creature with base power and toughness 3 3 until the end of the turn. Hmm. Kind of cool. Kind of cool. And then we got another dungeon, the Tomb of Annihilation. Um, I don't know if I should be reading these because I don't want to spoil all these dungeons, but I mean, whatever. Um, it summons the monster on the back of the card, though, so I guess it's kind of a spoiler. Um, that's pretty neat. Okay. So, we might be wondering, why is this, like, surfer dude on the cover of all these packs? Like, what did this surfer dude do that made him so special? This is actually Bahamut in his young human form. Uh, Bahamut whenever he is in a humanoid form, is always accompanied by seven golden canaries. And each of those canaries is also an ancient gold dragon. I guess sometimes they're not ancient, but they're always 
uh, gold dragons. So you try to try to mess with this dude. Not only are you dealing with the avatar of Bahamut in spellcaster form, but you're also dealing with seven gold dragons. Um, yeah, I thought it was interesting they went with young version because you almost always see old man version. Um, so it's it's very interesting. Anyways, we'll learn a lot more about Bahamut when that Fizzband's book comes out. So. Which, yeah. Alright, let's see what we got here. Uh, we got an art card of Dritz and Guinevar. It actually is super dope looking. Wow. That's a great Guinevar. Holy shit. Um, yeah, wow. Okay, uh, we got a forest card. It's cool. Ooh, we got an old school displacer beast. That's neat. Uh, let's see, old school displacer beast is... A cat and also a beast. It is two and a blue. Okay. That kind of makes sense for Displacer Beast to be blue, I guess. Uh, when Displacer Beast enters the battlefield, venture into the dungeon. Ah, like Volpe was saying. That's how you venture into the dungeon. Okay. Um, displacement three. Return Displacer Beast to its owner hand. So three and one. We'll, we'll send it back to the hand. Hmm. I mean, it's about as good as the 5th edition Displacer Beast, which is to say, not good. Uh, what do we got here? Vampire Spawn. I guess if you keep returning it to your hand, you can keep venturing into the dungeon, so that part's kind of cool. Uh, vampire Spawn is a vampire. Uh, when Vampire Spawn enters the battlefield, each opponent loses 2 life, and you gain 2 life. Hmm. Uh, you're ambushed on the road. Choose your own adventure. Uh, it's cheap to cast. It's an instant. Make a retreat. Return target creature you control to its owner's hand. Uh, stand and fight. Target creature gets plus one, plus three until the end of turn. I bet they've got like one for each color, maybe. Uh, what do you got here? Valor Singer. This is a tiefling bard. Uh, they have combat inspiration. At the beginning of combat on your turn, target creature you control gets plus one, plus zero, until end of turn. Hmm. That's kind of cool, I guess. Uh, what do we got here? Sudden Insight. Uh, it's a very expensive blue card. Draw a card for each different mana value among non-land cards in your graveyard. Okay. Okay. So, so each different mana value among I don't I don't really understand how this works. Um draw a card for each different mana value among non land cards in your graveyard. So I guess you look at your graveyard and you if there's like a card that's one mana to summon, two mana to summon, three mana to summon, four mana to summon, that that kind of thing, maybe. Uh, maybe that's what it means. All right. Uh, let's see the wizard class. Okay, wizards in blue checks out. Checks out. Uh, let's see. You have no maximum hand size. All right, makes sense. When this class becomes level two, you just draw two cards. Not that great. When you draw a card. Put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control. Well, that's dope. Okay, that's pretty cool. I feel like this, this set would be really fun if you only used cards from this set. But I feel like mixing it with some of these other sets, that it, there's only going to be a handful of cards that people are going to want from here. But who knows. Magic Missile as a red. Hmm. Okay, I know red does direct damage, but... Let's see. This spell can't be countered. Well, that's good flavor. Magic Missile deals three damage, divided as you choose among one, two, or three targets. Okay. Yeah, I like that. That's pretty cool. I think I will add that to the deck uh, that my friend made me. I think it'll be pretty cool. Because it, it gets used like unlimited magic as long as you or unlimited. Anyways, it's really good. It's a really good deck. Uh, let's see. Herald of Hadar. Okay, bringing Hadar in there, that's pretty cool. Uh, Human Warlock, Circle of Death, for 6 mana, roll a d20. Each opponent loses 2 life. 
Each opponent loses two life and you gain two life. Or nat 20, each opponent loses two life and you gain two life and you create two treasure tokens. Hmm. That's, 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 I mean, that's like a lot, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work for six mana. Hmm. But he is also a creature. So, that's cool. I heard that black was actually very strong in uh, in this set. Uh, Drider. Uh, it's a dope looking Drider. Holy shit. Um, elf Spider. So, since it says Elf, you could use this in an Elf deck. Right? I mean, that, that, that counts as an Elf. Reach. When Drider deals combat damage to a player, create a 2-1 Black Spider token with Menace and Reach. Wow, that's... That's pretty good. Okay, that's a cool monster. Uh, what do we got here? Westgate Regent, which is a vampire. Uh, it has flying. It has ward. Discard a card. Whenever this creature becomes the target of a spell or ability an opponent controls, counter it unless that player discards a card. Oh, well, that's pretty cool. Whenever Westgate Regent deals combat damage, put that many plus one, plus one counters on it. Wow, that is really good. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see what we got here. Trickster's Talisman, which is uh, shiny, I guess. Um, this is an artifact card. Uh, invoke Duplicity. A equipped creature gets plus one, plus one, and has whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player... Uh, you may sacrifice Trickster's Talisman. If you do, create a token that's a copy of this creature. Oh, wow. Okay. That's kind of cool. That's really cool. Okay. Wow. That's that's pretty fun. Uh, it's a shame that it's a blue card, though. I mean, I get why it's a blue card, but... Uh, what do we got here? Fodder Cannon. Uh, adorable artwork. By oh D Litzy, um, who did all of the art for basically all of Second Edition D and i I'm ba I'm not I'm not lying. Dude did the entire Monster Manual and then all of Planescape. He, he's a legend. Uh, then he went on to do Spiderwick, which you know was cool. Uh, fodder cannon. Sacrifice a creature. Fodder cannon deals four damage to target creature. Okay, I mean. It feels like it'd be good for a goblin deck, which is probably why they show goblins in the picture. All right, let's keep going. Uh, we've got our friend Imerith here. Oh, oh, so fucking majestic. All right, let's check it out. All those Bahamuts just staring at us. Uh, we got an art card of the mountains. I wonder if those are the spine of the world. Well, it's just called mountains. Then we have an actual mountain, and it's a shiny one. Ooh. Cool. Uh, then we got an old-school Null Hunter, which we already looked at Null Hunter. But the old-school art and design is pretty cool. Uh, another Vampire Spawn. Another Ambushed on the Road. Another Valor Singer. Uh, what do we got here? An Ingenious Smith. All right. It's pretty cheap. It's a 1-1. One -one. And man, there's a lot going on here. Uh, when Ingenious Smith enters the battlefield, look at the top four cards of your library. You may reveal an artifact card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Whenever one or more artifacts enter the battlefield under your control, put a plus one plus one counter on Ingenious Smith. This ability triggers only once each turn. Okay. I guess this is for like the Bruner Battlehammer deck. That they're kind of hinting that you would make. Uh, let's see. Rust Monster. It's a adorable little Rust Monster. Uh, that has First Strike. Sacrifice an Artifact. Rust Monster gets plus two, plus zero until end of turn. Um, okay. If you have enough people generating treasure tokens, uh, I guess that's kind of cool. If you have a way to keep pumping out um, crap artifacts to feed it. Overall, though, 2-1 for 3... I mean, the first strike is nice, but mm, I don't know. Uh, we got Bag of Holding, which is another artifact. Whenever you discard a card, exile that card from your graveyard. 
Uh, draw a card, then discard a card for two, or for four, sacrifice the Bag of Holding, return all cards exiled with Bag of Holding to their owner's hand. Okay, that's kind of neat. Alright. Uh, what else we got? Goblin Javelinier. Uh, this is a one red, one one haste. Whenever Goblin Javelinier, Javelinier becomes blocked, it deals one damage to target creature blocking it. Okay. Uh, then we got the actual Hand of Vecna. That's cool. Uh, legendary Artifact Equipment. At the beginning of combat on your turn, a quick creature or a creature you control named Vecna okay, uh, gets plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the number of cards in your hand. Uh, pay one life for each card in your hand, uh, and it costs two to equip. Hmm, that's a pretty costly. Uh, pay one life for each card in your hand. At the beginning of combat on your turn, a quick creature is a control it gets plus 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 turn where X is there. Wow. That's a lot. That's a lot to take in. Any yeah, common turn, quick creature, creature control, and then Vecna um, gets plus X plus X until the end of the turn. Max. Hmm. Okay. Uh, then we got another one of these super badass vampires uh, with classic art. And then we got this hired Hexblade, which is another elf, another black uh, elf. So, when Hired Hexblade enters the battlefield, if mana from a treasure was spent to cast it, you draw a card, and you lose one life. Uh, okay. Uh, and then there's just something that's like fr Friday Night Magic, and then a zombie. So, okay. Cool. Let's see what else we got going on here. Oh, shit. We have an adorable flump, and it is captured in art, farting on someone. Um, so basically, this is the greatest card that has ever been made. Which Bahamut would I choose? Uh, I don't know. Oh, oh, of the three that are here? Yeah, I, ch I just always go left. You always go left, Red. Uh, let's see what we got here. Mountain. Fine. Celestial Unicorn. Okay. With that old ass art. Uh, whenever you gain life, put a plus one, plus one counter on Celestial Unicorn. That seems pretty good. Uh, we got another Goblin Javelinier. Uh, we got a Hobgoblin Captain, and the decision was correct to make them goblins. So that's cool. Uh, pack tactics, whenever Hobgoblin Captain attacks, if you attacked with a creature with a total of power of 6. Uh, Hobgoblin Captain gains first strike until the end of the turn. That's good, because he's only got one toughness. So, so that's, yeah. Uh, what do we got? Dueling Rapier. Alright, it has Flash, uh, which is cool, for one red. Uh, yeah, Paper Tigers, just like the game. Uh, well, just like D&D, &D, like, because there's two different games. Uh, when Dueling Rapier enters the battlefield, attach it to target creature you control. Equip creature gets plus two, plus zero. Um, or you can equip it manually for four, which is very expensive, since you get to equip it for free. And you can also equip it as an instance, or an instant because of flash. That's pretty cool, though. I, I like that one. All right, what do we got here? Iron Golem. He is four cost. He is an artifact creature. He has vigilance. Checks out. Iron Golem attacks or blocks each combat if able. Oh no. Oh wow. Okay, that's kind of a cool way to handle a golem. Like, you don't have total control over it, which matches the theme of golems in uh, Dungeons and Dragons. Okay, that's that's pretty cool. Uh, what do we got here? Chaos Channeler is a human shaman. And Wild Magic Surge. Whenever Chaos Chandler attacks, whenever they attack, roll a d20. Um, exile the top card of your library, 1 to 9. Uh, you may play it this turn. Okay. Um, exile the top two cards of your library. You may play them this turn. Okay. 
Um, exile the top three cards of your library. You may play them this turn. How are you playing them and also exiling them? I, do you exile them after you play them? I'm not 100% on this one. Because exiling is like, you remove it from the whole fucking game, right? Like it's completely gone? I'm not 100% sure. Uh, we got Burning Hands. Uh, Burning Hands deals 2 damage to target creature or planeswalker. If that permanent is green, it instead deals 6 damage. You play them from exile? Hmm. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, it's sort of like Fortell in this case. Exile is serving as a holding zone. Oh, okay. Okay. I have like a commander, like a Viking ghost commander guy that does all sorts of exile shit. So, and foretelling. So, yeah, that checks out. Um, yeah, Burning Hand sounds pretty good. Especially when you can you know, mess up green. Uh, let's see what we got here. Scion of Stygia. This is another tiefling, uh, which is cool. And another shaman. A lot of shamans, considering there's no shaman officially in 5e. Uh, this creature is a flash creature. It has Cone of Cold. When Scion of Stygia enters the battlefield, choose target creature and opponent controls and roll a d20. On a 1 to 9, tap that creature. On a 10 to 20, tap that creature. It doesn't untap during the controller's next untap step. That's pretty cool for a common creature. Low cost common creature. Um, Guild Thief uh, is an orc rogue. Oh, that's a cool flex. I like that. Uh, whenever Guild Thief deals combat damage to a player, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Okay. Uh, cunning Action. Uh, it costs three and one blue. Guild Thief can't be blocked this turn. Hmm. All right. That's pretty neat. Uh, let's see. Wizard Spellbook is an artifact. Exile, target, instant, or sorcery from a graveyard. Roll a d20. Activate only as a sorcery. Uh, copy that card. You may cast the copy. Copy that card... Uh, let's see, exile, instant or sorcery card from a, from a graveyard. Doesn't even have to be your graveyard. Any graveyard. That's kind of cool. Um, copy that card, you may cast the copy. Uh, copy that card, you may cast the copy by paying one rather than its mana cost. And then copy each card exiled with wizard's spell book. You may cast any number of the copies without paying their mana cost. Holy shit. I mean, I know it's only a 5% chance, but that's really cool. And it's very thematic. I mean, I got to I got to give props. Uh, man. Okay. Wow. Uh, all right. Plus 2 mace. Okay, equip creature gets plus two, plus two. Um, let's see. Equip three, and, and that's it. That's all it does. That's all. Uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, Morophon the Boundless. All right. Morophon is a legendary creature, a shapeshifter. They are a changeling. This card is every creature type. Okay. Um, as Morophon, the Boundless, enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. Um, spells of the chosen type you cast cost one white, one blue, one black, one red, one green, less to cast. This effect reduces only the amount of colored mana you pay. Uh, other creatures you control of the chosen type get plus one, plus one. Well, shit. That's a pretty cool card, I think. I don't know. Wow. Alright. Hmm. Okay, next up. Alright, let's see. We've got Art of... I want to say, what is this? Hall of Storm Giants. Wow, that's really cool looking. Okay. Uh, we got an island. Alright. 
And then we got classic art of clattering skeletons, which we haven't seen yet. When clattering skeletons dies, venture into the dungeon. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, we got another goblin javelinier, another hobgoblin captain, another dueling rapier. We got a portable hole. When, excuse me, when portable hole enters the battlefield, exile target non-land permanent an opponent controls with mana value two or less until a portable hole leaves the battlefield. Mm, it's pretty cool for one mana. Also counts as an artifact if you need artifact for something. Uh, check for traps. Target opponent reveals their hand. Uh, you choose a non-land card from it. Exile that card. If an instant card uh, with flash is exiled this way, they lose one life. Otherwise, you lose one life. That's a lot. There's a lot going on there. Uh, then we got Crindle of Baldur's Gate. A legendary creature. A human elf rogue. That's so cute that they made him human and elf because they're a half elf. Um, whenever Crindle of Baldur's Gate deals combat damage to a player, that player loses one life and mills a card. And then you gain one life and scry one. Uh, whenever you attack, you may pay two. If you do, target creature can't be blocked this turn. Hmm. Wow. I feel like that has some commander potential. Maybe? A little bit? Um. Because, I mean, he's a, he's a target creature. Or she's a target creature. Or they're a target creature. So you could just do it to yourself. And get in there. Hmm. Plus elf. Um, some some stuff going on there. Blue and black. Man, I feel like blue and black are definitely stronger. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yeah, it's cheap as hell to bring out two two mana, one blue, one black, and this guy's out into play. Um, that's a good. I that's good. I don't know a lot about modern magic. Uh, again, I I played back in the day with like OG Legends, the Dark, you know that kind of shit. But like, man, that that seems really cool. Um, yeah, blue and black so far seem to be the standouts. Um, definitely seem to be the standouts. All right, who we got here? Shambling Ghast. Uh, it's a single black to summon. It's a zombie. When Shambling Ghast dies, you may choose one. Brave the Stench. Target creature and opponent control gets negative one, negative one until the end of turn. Okay, not not too great unless you need the lower power for some other effect. Uh, or if they're 1-1, one, one, I guess they die instantly, right? Because that reduces them to 0-0. Zero, zero. Uh, search the body. Create a treasure token. Okay, that's that's kind of a cool effect. Um, obviously, in Commander, you only get one of these little guys. But in Standard, you get up to four, I want to say. I Again, I'm going off of rules from 20, 25 years ago. Uh, what do we got here? Arcane Investigator. Uh, let's see... Another blue card, it's an elf wizard. Um, pay six mana to roll a card. Draw a card, one to nine, or ten to twenty. Look at the top three cards of your library. Put one of them into your hand, and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. That seems pretty good. It's very expensive. It's very expensive to, to activate, but, I mean, you know, it's, it's pretty good for fishing for cards, I guess. Uh, what do we got here? Varus, Silvery Moon Ranger. Oh, dang. Uh, this is another legendary creature. It's a human elf ranger, because again, half elf. Uh, it has reach. It has ward one. It's a 3-3 three, three for three mana. Also an elf. Whenever you cast a creature or planeswalker spell, venture into the dungeon. Oh, shit. A commander? Potentially a commander that triggers going into the dungeon. Um, that's fucking awesome. This ability triggers only once each turn. Uh, whenever you, oh, sorry, whenever you cast a creature or planeswalker spell, venture the dungeon. Wow. Um, whenever you complete a dungeon, create a 2-2 two, two green wolf token. Man, you build a whole deck around dungeon delving and make this guy your commander. That's a pretty cool. 
All right, what do we got here? Oh, there it is. I was worried there wasn't going to be any bugbears, um, which fortunately are also goblins. Um, he's a 3-3 three, three with haste for 3 and a goblin. So basically perfection. I miss my goblin deck. I miss it, I miss it a lot, actually. Uh, what is this? Magic mini game Booster Blitz. Best your opponent in a series of fast Magic the Gather games using only the cards from a single pack. Each player opens a pack and makes four face-down piles of three cards each uh, using the magic cards inside. Players make their piles with the goal of winning a series of magic games with these modified rules. Players start at five life, have infinite mana, and cannot lose by drawing from an empty library. Well, that's, that's wild. Okay. Um, and then treasure token on the back. Cool, cool, cool. All right, let's keep going. Man, I kind of forgot how fun it is to open cards. Mm, it seems like a dangerous thing I just said. Uh, what do we got here? A very handsome Illithid. And some friends hanging out. Okay. True Polymorph. Oh, that's why he has friends, because that's not really an Illithid. That, that makes more sense. Yeah, Illithids don't have friends. Uh, then we got some planes. That's whatevs. Uh, hey, we got an old school art for Kaylin the Reclusive Painter. Uh, she is a black red human elf bard. I love all the fucking half elves because no nobody can just commit. You know what I'm saying? You got to be half elf. Um, let's see. Legendary creature, human elf bard. When Kaylin Reclusive Painter enters the battlefield, create a treasure token. Hmm. Other creatures you control enter the battlefield with an additional plus one, plus one counter for each mana from a treasure spent to cast them. Hmm. Kind of cool. I don't know if I would build a whole commander deck around that theme of treasure summoning, but, you know, there's, it's, it's kind of cool. Uh, let's see what we got here. Boots of Speed. They are red for some reason. I guess because red has more haste than other color types. Uh, a cool creature gets plus one, plus zero, and has haste. And it's only one to equip, and it's only one to play. So that's pretty good. I mean, haste really only has that effect on the first turn, though, right? So after that, they're just sort of wearing equipment. Eh. But if you have Bruner, right? Like, they get boosted for wearing equipment. Uh, Armory Veteran. Uh, relatively cheap orc warrior. As long as armory veteran is equipped, it has a menace. It can't be blocked except by two or more creatures. There you go. You could put them boots of speed on that guy. Uh, or give him this great axe. Uh, only one cost uh, equipped creature gets plus four plus zero. Uh, but it costs five to equip. Still pretty dope. Alright, what else we got here? A lulsum troll. Only five for the 6-2 troll. Uh, let's see. Roll a d20. Activate only if lonesome, lonesome troll is in your graveyard. Um, roll a d20. 1 to 9. Put it on top of your library. Uh, 10 to 9. Um, put it in your hand. Uh, 20. Return to the battlefield tapped. I really like that. Uh, I think that's pretty cool. Uh, you do have to keep paying the cost to, to summon it, but what a neat way to do regeneration without just giving it regenerate. Um, very very thematic. Very cool. Ooh, who do we got here? Targ Nar. Demon Fang Knoll. Red Green. Uh, and he is a legendary creature as well. Pack Tactics. Whenever Targ Nar, Demon Fang Knoll attacks, if you attack with creatures, blah, 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 um, get plus one, plus one until end of turn. Hmm, that's okay. Um, I was kind of hoping for something more. And then double Targnaw's power and toughness until the end of the turn. Hmm. Hmm. Sorry, bro. Uh, let's see. Ray of Frost is an enchantment aura. Okay, it's a flash that enchants a creature. When Ray of Frost enters the battlefield, if enchanted creature is red, tap it. As long as enchanted creature is red, it loses all abilities. Seems a little mean towards red. Enchanted creature doesn't untap during its controller's untap phase. Okay, so it's still useful against other people. 
Uh, but it really screws uh, screws over uh, red. Monk of the Open Hand. This is an elf monk. A lot of elves. I mean, it's Dungeons and Dragons, so I guess that checks out. But, like, a lot of elves. A lot of different flavors of elves. Uh, Flurry of Blows, which is also Dungeons and Dragons. Um, Flurry of Blows. When you cast your second spell each turn, put a plus one, plus one counter on Monk of the Open Hand. Oh, I know exactly where to put this guy. I'm actually going to set him off to the side. Okay. Um, Zorn. Aw, adorable. He's eating that treasure. That's, oh, no, no, he's eating the ore out of the minecart. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, let's see. He is an elemental. Uh, if you would create one or more treasure tokens, instead create those tokens plus an additional treasure token. Hmm. Okay. Cool to see treasure tokens having a lot of... Oh, wow. Who? Zariel, the Archduke of Avernus. I feel like that's good. All right. Uh, what do you got going on here? Uh, let's see. Hmm. Oh, her whip is, like, covering up her name. She's kind of, like, busting out of her card a little bit there. Uh, let's see. Legendary Planeswalker Zariel. This is actually my first Planeswalker card ever. Because we did not have Planeswalkers when I played Dungeons & Dragons. Or, sorry, when I played Magic the Gathering. Uh, I have seen such creatures, and I have read about them. But I did not ever have one. So that's kind of fun. Um, she is only four mana to summon. And these guys operate off of some weird economy called loyalty. And they're basically like a second player. Like a Marvel vs. Versus, versus, uh, Capcom jump-in character. Um, so they're like a miniature version of yourself, I guess. Anyways, um, you do this shit to get the loyalty up. And then this shit doesn't cost you any loyalty. And then this shit costs you loyalty, but it's really, really good. That's my general understanding of it. Uh, and the loyalty also equals their health. Uh, so creatures you control get plus one, plus zero, and haste until the end of the turn. Kind of cool. Uh, let's see. For nothing, you can create a 1-1 one, one red devil creature token with... When this creature dies, it deals one damage to any target. Uh, adorable. And then if you spend six... Uh, you get an emblem with, at the end of the first combat phase on your turn, untap target creature you control. After this phase, there's an additional combat phase. I don't know what an emblem is, but I'm going to say that being able to have two combat phases in one turn could be really, really good, says a guy that doesn't know anything about modern magic. That's my That's my hot take on that. So, I would say Zariel, pretty cool. Alright, what do we got here? Temple of the Dragon Queen. Uh, let's see. Temple of the Dragon Queen. An adventure for characters... Oh, uh, thank you, Gaki Moose. Uh, an emblem is an untargetable reminder. Uh, let's see. This is another land. I love how the special lands are old-timey modules. That makes me really happy. Um, as Temple of the Dragon Queen enters the battlefield, you may reveal a dragon card from your hand. Temple of the Dragon Queen enters the battlefield tapped unless you revealed a dragon card in this way, or you control a dragon. As Temple of the Dragon Queen enters the battlefield, choose a color, add one mana of the chosen color. Well, that's pretty cool. Oh, apparently... I guess it's shiny, but it's shiny in the most, like, muted way. It's still pretty cool, though. Uh, then we got here. Expedition map. This is a one-cost artifact. Sacrifice the map. Search your library for a land card. Reveal it and put it into your hand. And then shuffle your library. Well, that's pretty good. If you're trying to mill for, uh, mill for land. Whew. All right. Let's keep going. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hmm. All right. Well, we have a gelatinous cube, and it is adorable. I, I'm guilty of this as well. Like, gelatinous cubes, obviously not green, but we all think it's green because it's really boring to draw an invisible creature. Um. So we're like, yeah, gelatinous cube's green. Um. But we all know the gelatinous cube is see-through. Um. But anyways. 
It's very cool. Very cool art. Very cool card. Oh, and then it just gives me its stats on the back, which is cute. All right. Uh, then we got a land card. Another lovely forest. And then we've got uh, a genie windseer. Oh, that's pretty cool looking. So this is a 3-3 genie. Ah, that's right. Genies are from blue. I remember that. Genies are from blue. Uh, let's see. Flying 3-3. Three, three. When Genie Windseeker enters the battlefield, roll a d20. And then you may scry. Scry 2 or scry 3. Um, yeah. Seems good. Alright. What do we got here? Boots of Speed again. Uh, Armory Veteran again. Great Axe again. Um, split the party. All right. Um, choose target player. Return half the creatures they could troll to their hand rounded up. And then the only quote they have is don't S split the party. That's, that's pretty fucking clever. Um, how do you return, how do you return, t uh, token creatures to somebody's hand? What if I'm playing somebody and they just got a shitload of tokens? Like, do they just cease to exist? I mean, they can't go back to your hand. The player gets to choose, though, right? Yeah, it just says return... Choose target player, return half the creatures they control to their own hand. It sounds like you get to control which creatures go back to the hand. Oh, wow. Yeah, because it doesn't say that they get to choose. So return half the creatures they control to their hand. Okay. Well, that's pretty dope. Uh, what do we got here? Keen-eared sentry. All right. It's cheap uh, and has hexproof. Each opponent can't venture into the dungeon more than once each turn. Oh, that's pretty neat and thematic for a guard. Wow, that's cool. Uh, we got another one of these guild thieves, which were very cool. We got another Pegasus, but this is a different one. Arborea Pegasus. Uh, let's see. Flying? No, we had a unicorn before. This is a Pegasus. Totally different. Uh, so it's a 2-3 flyer. When Arborea Pegasus enters the battlefield, target creature gets plus one, plus one, and gains flying until the end of the turn. I mean, could be clutch. Could be clutch. Um, but for four, I don't know. Eh. What do we got here? Uh, Trellisara, the moon dancer. They are an elf cleric. And they are a white-green. Man, I, I played a lot of Magic as a kid. I don't remember too many people having the courage to play a white-green deck. Um, I wonder if, if white-green is any good nowadays. Uh, this is an Elf Cleric. Uh, whenever you gain life, put a plus one, plus one counter on her. And scry one. Okay, that's kind of cool. I don't know if you would choose to make this a commander... But it's super cheap to get into play, and then you could essentially, like, scry your, your own deck. You would just need to make sure that you were doing a life generation situation. Um, could be some good synergies there with some other cards. Hmm. I wish I knew the cards that came out in the last 25 years, so I could be like, yeah, it would go great with this thing. <gasps> Our first kobold. All right. Minion of the Mighty. Uh, it is a one cost, zero one. Checks out for Kobold. Has Menace. Fuck yeah. Good for you, Kobold. You're zero one and you have Menace. Just wipe this tear away. I'm so proud of you, little guy. Uh, whenever Minion of the Mighty attacks, uh, if you attack with six or more power, blah, 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 you may put a dragon creature from your hand onto the battlefield, tapped and attacking. What the fuck? What? Wow. Wow. That's really cool. Okay. That's pretty cool. Some of those dragons are really expensive to cast. Oh my god. Hmm. Mm hmm. Oh, I mean, he's a rare card, so I guess that, that makes sense. Holy shit. Alright. Uh, ooh. This is pretty. Uh, we got a Rhyme Shield Frost Giant. He is a giant warrior. He is 4-5 for 5. Uh, blue. Ward 3. Whenever this creature becomes the target of a spell, opponent controls. Uh, counter it unless they pay 3. Yeah, that's pretty cool. 
All right, we got another dungeon. It's the Lost Mine of Fandelver. I don't mind spoiling this one. Um, cave entrance lets you scry. Goblin lair. There were no goblins in the Lost Mine of Fandelver. Oh, man. Uh, create a 1-1 one, one red goblin token creature. Uh, mine tunnels. Create a treasure token. Um, let's see. Storeroom. Plus one, plus one counter on target creature. Dark pool. Each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. Fungal, fungi cavern. That was actually in the dungeon. Um, target creature gets... I want to say, what is that? Negative four to its attack until the next turn. Uh, Temple of Doomathon. As dungeons go, I feel like it's not a very good dungeon. Compared to some of the other ones I just saw. And then that is a really cool looking skeleton. Holy shit. I see a lot of skeleton art on the daily, but man, that's a pretty cool skeleton. Okay, let's keep going. I had no idea that it would take this long. I... But I guess that's good, because we're not running into the same stuff over and over again. Uh, what do we got here? Oh, shit. We got, like, a dragon like coming out of a portal or some shit. It's like a Dracolich, I want to say. Bar the gate. Okay, that's cool. It's cool. Uh, we got a swamp. And we've got that Pegasus from before, but with old school art. And leather armor. Uh, only cost one. A lot of cheap equipment cards. A lot of cheap equipment cards. There's a commander deck that I picked up where the whole theme is the dude gets strong and his, his allies get strong when he equips gear. So all these cheap-ass equipment cards would actually really help that guy out quite a bit. Um, overall, I didn't think it was a great deck because it, it felt very unbalanced. Like there's only It's like a 100-card deck, and I think there were like nine creatures in the whole deck. Um, but the point was not using the creatures in the deck, but using the commander over and over again. I don't know. Anyways, uh, a quick creature gets a plus zero, plus one, and has ward one. And it's zero to equip. And they even had to say, activate only once each turn, because you would just keep swapping it back and forth, I guess. Huh. That's cool. All right. Dwarf Hold Champion. This is a dwarf warrior. Fascinating that the dwarves are white. Uh, primarily. Um, that's been kind of neat. As long as Dwarf Hold Champion is equipped, it gets plus zero, plus two. Okay, another Brunor Battle Hammer uh, situation. Uh, Mace, we already saw. Ooh, Red Dragon. All right. Uh, red Dragon is six cost, flying four for red. It is got Fire Breath. When Red Dragon enters the battlefield, it deals four damage to each opponent. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, let's see what we got here. A dungeon map. Um, you can add colorless mana with this, or you can venture into the dungeon. Uh, activate only as a sorcery. Oh, well, that's cool. Okay, I like that. Uh, purple worm. Of course they made you green, because you're a big monster. Uh, seven cost, eight, seven. This spell costs two less to cast if a creature died this turn. Well, that's thematic as hell. Uh, ward 2. Whenever this creature becomes the target of a spell. So a lot of ward. I guess that's to represent like magic resistance on these creatures. Uh, or legendary resistance. Yeah. Anyways, it's pretty cool. Uh, we got another mace 2. Did I get two plus two maces in the same de uh, pack? That kind of sucks. Uh, Hunter's Mark. This spell costs three less to cast if the tar if it targets a blue permanent you don't control. So it's an anti-blue card. Uh, this spell can't be countered. So it's definitely an anti-blue card. Uh, target creature you control gets plus one, plus one until the end of the turn. Uh, then it deals damage equal to its power to target creature or planeswalker you don't control. Oh. Well, that's a pretty neat way to handle Hunter's Mark. Okay. Holy shit, it's Orcus. Oh, wow. Hey, buddy. Uh, Orcus, the Prince of Undeath. He is Black, Red, 2, and Mysterious X. He, I, I think I saw his card before. He's actually not very strong, but... Um, he's a 5-3. I mean, I guess they're using his 5th edition stats here. Um, he has Flying and Trample, which seems kind of cool. Uh, when Orcus, Prince of Undeath, enters the battlefield, 
Uh, choose one. Each other creature gets negative X, negative X until the end of the turn, but you lose X life. But that could kill a lot of creatures. Um, return up to X target creature cards with total mana value X or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. They gain haste until the end of the turn. Huh. That's pretty cool. It's a little pricey. I don't know if you could build, like, a commander deck around this guy. I'm sure someone will do it, but... I mean, very cool art, though. Like, very cool art of this dude. Oh, man. Alright, then we got Long Rest. Uh, let's see. This is a foily rare. Three green and X. Return X target cards with different mana values from your graveyard to your hand. If eight or more cards were returned to your hand this way, your life total becomes equal to your starting life total, but you must exile long rest. Well, I guess you exile long rest no matter what. That's still pretty pretty cool. I mean, it's definitely a late game changer, honestly. Um, wow, holy shit. Okay. Uh, and then what do we got here? Uh, Icing Death. Frost Tongue. So this is a token for Icing Death. I haven't even encountered anything that would tell me to get Icing Death. Hmm. Uh, Equip Creature gets plus two, plus zero. When Equip Creature attacks, tap target creature, because that's what Ice does in Magic the Gathering. All right. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, let's see what else we got. Mm -mm -mm. Alrighty. Uh, we've got lovely art of the man, or Blob Ball himself, uh, Xanathar. So that's pretty cool. Alright. I wouldn't mind, um, you know, <clears throat> Xanathar's actual card, you know. I mean, you could just buy his commander deck to get him, but still. Uh, we've got an island. Uh, we've got a Baleful Beholder with cool artwork. Um... The Baleful Beholder is a common creature, which is which is wild. Um, all right, so it's six. Uh, it's black. It's a six-five. It doesn't have flying. Uh, sorry about that, Beholder. Uh, when Baleful Beholder enters the battlefield, choose one. Anti-Magic Cone, each opponent sacrifices an enchantment. Fear Ray, creatures you control gain menace until the end of the turn. Both of those seem pretty good. It seems like a pretty good common card. It's a little price, but the effect is pretty good. Leather armor, we've already seen. Dwarf Old Champion. Wow, we'll just build a house out of all these plus two maces. Oh, critical hit. Okay. Um, This is an instant. It is a red. Target creature gains double strike until the end of the turn. When you roll a natural 20, return critical hit from your graveyard to your hand. A natural 20 is the roll that splits a 20 on the die. Well, thank you. Um, that's pretty dope. Okay. Uh, let's see what else we got. Barbarian class. Ooh. Um, if you would roll one or more dice, instead, roll that many dice plus one and ignore the lowest roll. Oh, okay, because reckless. Okay. Um, whenever you roll one or more die, target creature you control gains plus two and gains menace until the end of the turn. Also cool. And all creatures you control have haste. Very cool. Okay. Well, that's awesome. All right. What do we got here? Uh, Faraday, the Devil's Chosen. It's a legendary creature. It's a tiefling warlock. It's a blue red. Okay. Uh, Dark One's Own Luck. Whenever you roll one or more dice, Faraday, Devil's Chosen, gains Flying and Menace until the end of the turn. Uh, if any of those results are 10 or higher, you may also draw a card. Okay, he's pretty cool. I He's, a, he's not Commander cool, but he's pretty cool. Okay. Uh, what do we got here? Neverwinter Dryad. It's one green for a 1-1. One, one. Uh... For two mana, you can sacrifice this Neverwinter Dryad to search your library for a basic forest and put it into the battlefield tapped and then shuffle. That's really sad, but also thematic. And also not that great. I saw a lot of elves um, that um, could just poop out mana constantly. They didn't have to kill themselves. 
Yeah, yeah. Basically, red. They're saying you kill her and take her tree. Yep, that's that's what they're, that's what they're saying. Um, here we got to choose your own adventure. You find some prisoners. Um, choose one: destroy target artifact or uh, interrogate them. Exile the top three cards of target opponent's library. Choose one of them until the end of your next turn. You may play that card. And you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast it. Wow. That's pretty cool. Alright, what else we got here? Uh, Forsworn Paladin is a 1 black for a 1-1. One, one. Uh, it is a human knight. It has menace. Um, let's see. For 1 and a black, you can tap it and pay a life to create a treasure token. Again, with the treasure tokens... I feel like a blue-black deck that focuses on treasure could be pretty fun. Um, then for two and a black as much as you want, target creature gets plus two until the end of turn. If mana from a treasure was spent to activate this ability, that creature also gains death touch until the end of the turn. Wow. Wow, putting in a lot of work there for a little 1-1 one, one creature. Um, also a rare card, um, which is probably why it's got so much shit going on. Uh, Noel Hunter, uh, we've seen a couple of these. This one's a shiny. And then what do we got here? Uh, a wolf token. And it's a cool looking wolf. Yeah, it's got armor on. It's pretty neat. All right, we finished one row. Let's go on to the next. Things will pick up. They're picking up speed. All right, who do we got here? Uh, let's see. It looks like, I don't want to say, I want to say it's like a bugbear or something. What the fuck is this? Let's see. Uh, Den of the Bugbear by Jeff Eastley. Oh, wow. He used to do all the novel, um, the, the cover art for all the novels. That's, that's awesome. Uh, all right. What do we got here? Um, a cool looking swamp. Oh, shit. I just noticed this. Um, this swamp card is actually the Underdark. Uh, as the plague ravages the world above, you've made your way into the Underdark in search of a fungal... Pen, pen, pencia. Um, but look at that. That's that's beautiful. Underdark Swamp. Alright. Uh, we got another Gretchen Titch Willow. Uh, this time with the old school art. Uh, which is which is kind of cool, I guess. And let's see what else we got here. Ranger's Longbow. This is an equipment card. Uh, equipped creature gets plus two, plus one, and reach. Uh, always good for green to get reach. Um, and that's it. It's pretty pretty basic. It's also one of the most beautiful um, bows I have ever seen. Like, as far as, like, an elven bow. Look at that. That's really nice. All right. Uh, let's see. Plummet. I don't like that. Destroy target creature with flying. What? Just like that? It's over? All right. Well, that's mean. Um, Arborea Pegasus again. Ooh, what what are you? Dungeon Crawler. Uh, you are a one black, two one zombie. Dungeon Crawler enters the battlefield tapped. Whenever you complete a dungeon, you may return Dungeon Crawler from your graveyard to your hand. Oh, okay. So in a dungeon delving, treasure generating situation. Oh, shit. Barrowin of Clan Under. Oh, shit. Okay. Um, she is a black-white. Okay, that's cool. Uh, when Barrowin of Clan Under enters the battlefield, venture into the dungeon. Whenever, uh, they attack, return up to one creature card with mana value three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield if you've completed a dungeon. Ah, that's pretty cool. Okay. Uh, let's see. Cloister Gargoyle is a white card. It is an artifact creature. Uh, two, um, let's see, zero, four. One Cloister Gargoyle enters the battlefield, venture into the dungeon. Uh, as long as you've completed a dungeon, Cloister uh, Gargoyle gets plus three and has flying. Oh, that's cool. Okay. Man, this dungeon mechanic's pretty, pretty neat. Uh, another Kalen the Reclusive Painter. Uh, which we already had. This is different art, though. This is like modern art. Uh, another purple worm. And uh, what's this? Treasure vaults. 
Um, add one mana. Uh, XX, sacrifice to create X treasure tokens. So I learned this. XX means you pay the cost twice. So you have to pay like four to get two treasure tokens or whatever. Still, all the shit that fuels off a of treasure, I feel like this is pretty useful. Oh, yeah, it's it's a rare card. Uh, and then we got another Herald of... Uh, Hadar, and it is just a shinier version. And we've got another uh, mini game that they want you to try and play called Magic and Minions. I don't know. I'll read that later. Oh, wow. There's a lot going on here. Okay. Next. All right. What do we got? Oh, we got the Drider art, which is very cool looking. Uh, we got a Plains. Which is totally like some Icewind Dale action there. Yep. Um, it's 10 towns. And what do we got here? Oh, we got old school art for the Javelinier. Uh, we got the Longbow again. Uh, we got Plummet again. Eh, it's starting to pick up pace now. Uh, we got the Blue Dragon, uh, which is blue. It is 5 colorless to blue. It is a flying 5-5. Five five. Uh, lightning Breath. When Blue Dragon enters the battlefield, until your next turn, target creature and opponent controls gets negative 3, negative 0. Up to one other one gets negative 2, negative 0. And up to one other one gets negative 1, negative 0. It's a shame it doesn't affect their toughness, because that would be really cool. Um, as it is, it's, it's it feels very limited for what it's bringing to the table. Um, Hunter's Mark, we've seen before... Tiger Tribe Hunter is a human barbarian. They cost five mana to summon. They're a four four. So this one person is basically as strong as Orcus, the the, the god of undead. Um. Anyways, uh, they have trample and pack tactics. Um. What they do is they deal damage equal to the sacrifice creature's power to target creature. Uh. So when you when you trigger pack tactics. You may sacrifice another creature. And then when you do, they deal damage equal to the sacrifice creature's power to target creature. <sighs> I just I don't I don't know. I'm not really not really feeling that one too hard. Uh Great Axe. Dire Wolf Prowler. Uh Dire Wolf Prowler gets plus two plus two and gains haste until the end of the turn. You can only activate it once each turn. I mean, don't you only need haste on the first turn anyways? Hmm. I think you can sink as much mana as you want to this, though. So for every two mana, it does get a plus two, plus two. Uh, which is pretty good. Oh, shit. Frog Hemoth? I'm glad you made it in here, buddy. Glad look, at how, look at how cute. Look at this cutie. Oh, my God. All right. Um, anyways, uh, it is three colorless, two green. It is a frog horror. It is a four, four with trample and haste. Whenever Froghemoth deals combat damage to a player, exile up to that many target cards from their graveyard. Okay. Well, shit. Um, put a plus one, plus one counter on Froghemoth for each creature card exiled this way. Also, you gain one life for each non-creature card exiled this way. Wow. Wow. I, that, that feels pretty good. I think that's... I think it's a pretty good card. I don't know. Man, that's cool. All right. Uh, check for traps. We've already done. And, oh, look at that fairy dragon. Oh, man. That's like a really cute fairy dragon. Holy shit. All right. Let's keep going. Mm -mm. All right. Uh, here we have, I want to say this is Clouth. Am I am I making assumptions here that this is Clouth? I know it's a red dragon, but let's see what the card says. Just red dragon. Ah, oh, well. Uh, and then we got a lovely uh, holographic island. Ooh, borderless art white dragon. Uh, we've already seen white dragon, but this is a really pretty card. It's like, I don't know. Wow. Man, I, I, I'm into that shit. It looks that looks really good. Okay. Um. Let's see. Eyes of the Beholder. Oh my God. <laughs> Somehow the Beholder's eyes, as an instant, is better than the Beholder itself. Um. 
Target creature gets a negative 11, negative 11 until the end of the turn. That's significant. But it does cost 6 mana to cast, but holy shit. Uh, what do we got here? We got another Baleful Beholder, and it's got different art. Okay, it's it's kind of a cute beholder. Kind of fungal, a little bit. Uh, we got to choose your own adventure for blue, finally. You come to a river, choose one. Uh, fight the current. Return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. Uh, find a crossing. Target creature gets plus one, plus zero until the end of turn and can't be blocked. Okay, that's pretty cool. Um, 50 feet of rope. Mm-hmm. This is for you, Oren. This is for you. Uh, it costs one to cast, and it can do a lot of shit, just like rope can. I really like that. Um, climb over. Target wall can't block you this turn. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. It took this long, but now, in Magic the Gathering, you can use a rope to climb over walls. It finally happened. Um, tie up. Uh, target creature doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. Um, and I, I can sense the sarcasm there, Red. Do people not use walls nowadays? Nobody uses walls anymore? I don't know. Walls were good. But back in my, back in my day. Uh, let's see. Creature doesn't untap during its controller's next untap phase. And then rappel down, venture into the dungeon. I'm gonna say that 50 feet of rope is is dope. AF. I I think it's really good. Oh, look at this fly for one blue mana. Enchant the creature. This creature has flying, and because that's not enough. 25 years later, you can't just have a card that gives you flying. That'd be fucking crazy. Um, whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player. Adventure into the dungeon. Very cool. Uh, eccentric Apprentice as a tiefling wizard. Uh, when Eccentric Apprentice enters the battlefield, venture into the dungeon. At the beginning of combat on your turn, if you've completed a dungeon, up to one target creature becomes a bird. Okay. Um, with base power and toughness 1-1 one, one, and flying into the dungeon. Okay, because polymorphing. Got it. Okay. And speaking of, Mordenkainen's Polymorph only costs two mana until the end of turn. Target creature becomes a dragon with base power and toughness 4-4 four, four and gains flying. Okay, so multi-purpose. Cool. Uh, Rust Monster, we've already seen. Ooh. Hall of the Storm Giants. It is a land. If you control two or more other lands, Hall of... The Storm Giants enters the battlefield tapped. It can add blue mana, uh, or you can spend six mana. Until the end of the turn, Hall of Storm Giants becomes a 7-7 blue giant creature with Ward 3, and is also still a land. Okay, that's pretty cool. Uh, we got another Valor Singer, and we got another Tomb of Annihilation. Alright, let's keep going. Mm. Oh, look at that lovely gold dragon. I'll be honest. I always felt like the gold dragons look like some kind of weird catfish monster. Wait, is that gold? Nah, maybe. Yeah, that's gold. Let's see. Yeah, it's gold dragon. Um, yeah, I wasn't I was never into all the whiskers and shit. I always thought they kind of looked like a catfish, but uh also they were lawful good and I hate lawful good alignment. Uh all right, mountain Ooh, a basilisk. An underdark basilisk. Because there's probably... Oh, yeah, there was a basilisk in like the original set. Um, it is a 1-2 with death touch. And it only costs 2 to summon. That's pretty cool. Uh, Eye of the Beholder, we've already looked at. Uh, Baleful Beholder, we already looked at. Come to a River, we've already seen. Hulking Bugbear, we've already seen. Uh, Gerblin Morningstar. This is another equipment card. I like all the equipment cards. Uh, very thematic. So it's two two mana. It's a red card. Equipped creature gets plus one, plus zero, and has trample damage. Uh, it does cost red and colorless to equip. When the Gerblin Morningstar enters the battlefield, roll a d20. 
Uh, 1 to 9, create a 1 1 red uh, goblin token creature. On a 10 to 20, create a 1 1 red goblin creature and then immediately attach goblin morning star to it. Oh, that's cute. Okay. Uh, battle cry goblin again. Uh, swarming goblins. I have not seen this one yet. Um, five mana when swarming goblins enter, you can create uh, one, two, or natural 23 uh, goblin tokens. Maybe I need to get that goblin deck started back up. I don't know. Uh, if you're wondering, like, hey, you paid, you played 25 years ago, why don't you just dig out your old cards and, um, you know, use those? Um, yeah, they all got thrown away. Um, yeah. It was a very sad, a very sad story. Uh, anyways. Uh, we got a Lightfoot Rogue. This is a Halfling Rogue. Uh, let's see. Pretty cheap to summon. It's 2-1. It's black. Uh, sneak attack. Whenever they attack, roll a d20. Lightfoot Rogue gains death touch on a 1 to 9. Uh, 10 to 19, it gets plus 1 and death touch. And 20, it gets plus 3 first strike and death touch. That's pretty damn good for a 2 cost creature. Oh my god. Ooh. Hobgoblin Bandit Lord. Relatively cheap to summon. Red card. Counts as a goblin. 2-3. Other goblins you control get plus one, plus one. Hobgoblin Bandit Lord deals damage equal to the number of goblins that entered the battlefield under your control this turn to any target. And that's tapping with one red. That's pretty good if you've got these dudes generating uh, goblin tokens like crazy. Oh, <gasps> look at this cutie. We got a holographic old school art of a boule. Um, sadly, they made the boule a green creature instead of a red creature, which is probably an oversight on their part, but, um, we'll just have to live with it, because it's, it's published now. Uh, at the beginning of your end step, if a creature died this turn, put a plus one, plus one counter on boule. That's pretty good. Wow. Common creature. Wow. Okay. Uh, and then what do we got here? Uh, let's see... Mm hmm. Nephalia Academy. If a spell or ability an opponent controls causes you to discard a card, you may reveal that card and put it on top of your library instead of putting it anywhere else. Ah. Uh, and you can just add colorless mana to your mana pool. Well, that's pretty cool. All right. Let's see what else we got. Mm hmm. Ooh. That's such a spooky Manticore. The D&D &D Manticore, especially the 5e D uh, Manticore, is so spooky. Um, I'm a I'm a much bigger fan of the traditional Greek Manticore with the scorpion tail. Um, and the much more like burly man face. But damn, is that... That's just a beautiful picture. Oh, and it's got stats, which is cute. Okay. And then we got Forest... Uh, which is cool. And we got the Direwolf Prowler with old school style art. Uh, which we've already looked at that. Uh, we got Evolving Wilds. Which is a land card that we've already seen with the retro um, modular art. Let's see. Sacrifice Evolving Wilds. Okay. And let's see. Direwolf Prowler again. I think that's even different art than the last one. What? You want Netherese flavor text? Alright, hold on, hold on. Uh, let's see. Parts of Faerun still churn with the magic of arrogant Netherese archmages long dead. I mean, I'm pretty sure most campaign settings have a whole ancient civilization that fucked up and now we have to deal with their leftovers. Um, but yeah, Faerun does a good job with it. Uh, you hear something on Watch. A Choose Your Own Adventure for White. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. The Wolf is good. The Wolf is really good. Um, but we already looked at it earlier. But, yeah, like, this guy is pretty damn dope. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, you hear something on Watch. Choose one. Rouse the party. Creatures you control get plus one, plus one until the end of the turn. Set off traps. The spell deals five damage to target attacking creature. Both of those seem pretty good. Pretty good. 
All right. You find some prisoners, which we've already uh, looked at, and I still think this is really awesome. Destroying an artifact or exiling three of your opponent's cards and then stealing one and then casting it. Like, that seems really good. All right. Um, we've got a legendary a person here, Hama Pashar. Uh, Hama Pashar Rune Seeker is one white and blue, and they are a human wizard. Room abilities of dungeons you own trigger an additional time. I definitely think their intention is for you to make her a commander in a dungeon delving deck, if I had to guess. Because um, it seems like a very like constant ability that you'd want to have access to. I don't know if dungeon delving is going to be that lucrative that you would give up some of the more insane commander options that you have. I wish we would pull a Xanathar because Xanathar is his his commander ability is absolutely ridiculous. He basically just steals everybody's shit. It's amazing. Scribbles, hush. Uh, we got a Grim Wanderer, um, which is awesome. Uh, one and black. It is a Goblin Warlock. What? Okay. Um, it has flash and a. At a tragic backstory. Cast the spell only if a creature died this turn. What the fuck? But it's 5-3. Okay. I, I can't believe tragic backstory is an ability in the game Magic the Gathering now. Uh, that is fucking amazing. Alright. Wow. Wow. Um, Steadfast Paladin is a Dwarf Knight. I'm down with that shit. Another white, which seems to be the color for dwarves, uh, for the most part. Lifelink. I don't know about dwarves from any other sets of magic, so this is all, this is all I know. I, I think we had dwarves... Yeah, we had dwarves in the beginning of magic, and they were red. Dwarves were always red. Because mountains, right? Um, so it's kind of cool to see all these uh, white-colored, uh, or white magic dwarves. Uh, and she has Lifelink and is 2-2. Which, I mean, that seems pretty good. Oh, we got another boule. And this is the modern art for the boule. And he likes to eat... Uh, he likes to eat dead stuff and get strong. So, seems fun. Uh, Cave of the Frost Dragon. Alright, what we got here? Uh, if you control two or more other lands, Cave of the Frost Dragon enters the battlefield tapped. Uh, tap for one white. Uh, spend four and a white... Uh, Cave of the Frost Dragon becomes a 3-4 white dragon with flying until the end of the turn, and it's still a land. Well, I mean, you might as well put it in your deck if you need white mana, because options? You know? Like, what the fuck? Alright, uh, you hear something on Watch, Holographic Edition. And then we got Nut Collector. Alright, uh, Nut Collector is a druid of undiscernible race and he is five uh plus a green for a one one creature and um at the beginning of your upkeep you may put one one green squirrel creature into play threshold all squirrels get plus two plus two you have threshold as long as seven or more cards are in your graveyard okay um, that's pretty neat. Okay, let's see what else we got. Mm -mm -mm. Oh shit, is that is that Tarask? All right, so we got art. I'm pretty sure it's Tarask, and it's got like I don't know. I guess that's a signature. Yeah, and it's like shiny and shit. I don't know. It looks really cool. Is it the Tarrasque? No, it's just a Basilisk. What the fuck? This guy went hard. They were like, hey, man, um, you want to do a magic card? And the guy's like, yeah, I want to do a magic card. Well, am I, am I going to do the Tarrasque? And they laughed at him. They're like, no, you're not doing the Tarrasque. How about Basilisk? And he's like, mm, sure. And then he just drew the Tarrasque. So, man, that's, that's fucking dope. All right. Uh, we got... Hey! 
Uh, Butler Log, you are not wrong. Uh, I am immediately updating all of my Basilisk token art to be this. Because <laughs> holy shit, that is the most heavy metal Basilisk I've ever seen. Um, Alright. Uh, ooh, Plains. Nice. I think that's beneath the um, Anorak Desert, I want to say. Ooh, look at this legendary creature. Another half-elf. I just love all these half-elves, and they have to call them human elves. It's amazing. Uh, Sheshra Death Whisper is um, a spooky elf. She is two plus black plus green. She's a one three and a legendary creature. She has bewitching whispers. When Sheshra Death Whisper or Death's Whisper enters the battlefield, target creature blocks this turn if able. Mm. Um, at the beginning of your end step, if a creature died this turn, you may pay two life. And if you do, you may draw a card. Hmm. Uh, overall, I don't really... I'm not really feeling it on that one. I'm not really feeling it. She's certainly not a commander, in my opinion. But, um... I don't know. I, 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 don't, like, I don't like damaging myself. Uh, Alright, let's see what else we got. We got another Evolving Wilds, which we've already uh, looked at. Another... Direwolf Prowler. Uh, see something on watch. Oh, okay. Choose your own adventure. You see a pair of goblins. Choose one. Charge them. Creatures you control get plus two, plus zero until the end of turn. Befriend them. Create two one one red uh, goblin creature tokens. If that isn't the most Dungeons and fucking Dragons card I've ever seen. Like, hmm. I like these cards. I'm kind of mad about I'm kind of mad about how much I like these cards actually. Um Intrepid Outlander. Yes, yes, Skull and Shackles is exactly what I was thinking about. Uh and then those goblins go on to be like the greatest NPCs of all time. Yep. I'm surprised Boblin the Goblin didn't get optioned into this set. Uh, Intrepid Outlander is an Orc Ranger. Nice to see Orcs having all these different jobs. It's cool. Uh, they have Reach, because Bow. Um, and Pack Tactics. Um, if you meet the requirements for Pack Tactics, uh, venture into the dungeon. I also like Pack Tactics having a requirement of 6 power, because a popular size of a 5th edition D&D group is 6 players. So I feel like there's a little bit, you know, a little bit of a, a nod to whatever. Um, we got another choose your own adventure. You happen upon a glade. Uh, journey on. Search your library for up to two basic lands. Reveal them. Put them in your hand and then shuffle. Well, that seems fucking good. Uh, make camp. Return target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. Also really good. That's, that's cool. All right. What do we got here? Uh, precipitous drop. Nice. Um, this is an enchant creature. When Precipitous Drop enters the battlefield, venture into that dungeon. Um, enchanted creature gets negative two, negative two. Um, it gets negative five, negative five instead, as long as you've completed a dungeon. Very cool. Uh, split the party, which we've already seen. Now, because you could just you could just buy their commander decks. Like, I'll just buy their commander decks. It's it's crazy to keep buying packs. Um, Dungeon Descent. Dungeon Descent enters the battlefield tapped, um, and then uh, tap an untapped legendary creature you control to venture into the dungeon. Not as good, not nearly as good as the treasure map artifact, but it does provide colorless mana, so you could put it in a dungeon delving deck. So that's kind of cool. And then we got a shiny split the party. And then we've got another magic mini game. Is this a thing they normally do? These magic mini games? I don't know. I have I Okay, I'm not a hundred percent sure. I think I think any dungeons you own you could play, but I'm not I'm not sure. I'm really not sure. Um Yeah. I finally know how they work, but I don't know how you select them. Oh dang, she looks really cool. I feel like I feel like this is the boss. Uh, this is Yennefer, some shit. 
That's probably not, how, not another name. But this is the boss. I want to say this is the boss of um, the Fire Cult. No, this is Faraday, Devil's Chosen. Hmm. Which we already saw the card for. Still really cool tiefling art. All right, let's see what else we got here. Um, we got another Underdark. Uh, an Underdark Island. All the Underdark land cards are amazing. Lord and Lady Mills says there's only three dungeons. All right, we got uh, another alt art boule. Uh, here's a new one. Circle of the Moon Druid. Uh, Circle of the Moon Druid is a two and a one green. It is a human elf druid, because half elf. Uh, it is a two four bear form. As long as it's your turn, Circle of the Moon Druid is a bear with base power four two. Okay, that's kind of cool. Uh, let's see. Plundering Barbarian is a dwarf barbarian. He is red. When Plundering Barbarian enters the battlefield, choose one. Smash the chest to destroy target artifact. Pry it open. Create a treasure token. That's fun. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure you swapped after enjoying the first six levels as a moon druid. You... Hmm... Hmm. Your play style just disgusts me. Uh, anyways, we got Silver Raven, a uh, signature item from every published adventure that Wizards of the Coast has ever made. Um, if you played a Wizards of the Coast 5th edition adventure and you did not find a Silver Raven, uh, it is because you weren't paying attention. Uh, because there's like one in every single adventure. Anyways, um, it is an artifact creature. It is a 1-1 one -one flying. When it enters the battlefield, you may scry one. That was a lot of reading to say that it's a card I would never want to use. Uh, let's see. You meet in a tavern. Uh, let's see. Two and then two green. Why does it have to be green? Mm. Green's dumb. Uh, choose one. Form a party. Look at the top five cards from your library. You may reveal any number of creature cards from among them and put them into your hand. Put the rest at the bottom of your library in a random order or start a brawl creatures you control get plus two plus two until the end of the turn another unbelievably thematic card and my heart is full of love um prosperous innkeeper is of course a halfling uh one and a green for a one one when prosperous innkeeper enters the battlefield create a treasure token uh whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control gain one life oh that's that's pretty cool. Wow. Okay. Uh, Skullport Merchant is a dwarf citizen. Nice. They, they got some uh, the representation here because we've got this Dwegar um, lady, no less, um, repping uh, Skullport. And let's see. This is a uh, two and one black for a one four. When they enter the battlefield, create a treasure token. And then sacrifice another creature or a treasure, and you could draw a card. Hmm. Okay. And that's pretty cool. Let's see. And we got Keen-Eyed Sentry, or Keen-Eared Sentry, which we already looked at. Ah, Guardian of Faith. Uh, one, and then two white for a Spiritual Knight. It's a 3-2. It's got Flash and Vigilance. When Guardian of Faith enters the battlefield, any number of other target creatures you control phase out. Ooh. Wow, that's pretty nice. Wow. That's... That's a, that's nice. Huh. Oh, hey! It's Bahamut! Uh, Grandmaster of Flowers, a.k.a. Bahamut. Um, he costs two and then two white. Um, Legendary Planeswalker Bahamut... Uh, as long as Grandmaster of Flowers has seven or more loyalty counters on him, he is a 7-7 dragon god creature with flying and indestructible. I mean, sounds good to me. Um, and everything he does builds loyalty. Uh, but you can only do one of these per turn, so it's going to take a little while uh, to get that shit going. Target creature without first strike, double strike, or vigilance can't attack or block until your next turn. Okay. A weird flex, but alright. Search your library and or graveyard for a card named Monk of the Open Hand. Reveal it and put it in your hand. If you search your library this way, shuffle. Hmm. Okay. 
I mean, I guess the fact that he can grab him out of the graveyard or the deck would make it very useful in if he was like a commander. Because I think Planeswalkers could be commanders too. I think. All right. Good shit, Bahamut. Uh, Sylvan Shepherd, we've already looked at, but this is a shinier version. And then another treasure token. Cool. All right, let's see what else we got. Uh, let's see. Ooh, look at that roper. That's a good roper. Wow, wow, wow. That's a good roper. Look at that guy. Getting ready to eat somebody. Ropers actually have pretty decent stats for their CR in 5e. I mean, obviously, you, you probably want to pump them up a little bit more, but, I mean, they're still pretty damn good. Uh, let's see. Spine of the World, uh, a.k.a. Mountains. Uh, we got an Old School Mimic, which is so derpy. Look at how derpy it is. Oh, my God. It's so adorable. Um, let's see. We got another Circle of the Moon Druid. Uh, we got another Plundering Barbarian. We got another Silver Raven that we could just throw in the trash. Uh, Wandering Troubadour. Uh, they're counting Dragonborn as Dragon, which I think is going to make a lot of people very happy. Um, sadly, it's a green card. Um, at the beginning of your end step, if you had a land enter the battlefield under your control this turn, uh, venture into the dungeon. Oh, that seems pretty fucking good. Okay. And he counts as a dragon. Hey, speaking of dragon, is a green dragon. Uh, it is four and then two green for a four four, which is following pretty much the equation of all these dragons. It is flying and it has poison breath when green dragon enters the battlefield until the end of turn. Whenever a creature an opponent controls is dealt damage, destroy it. That's ah, wow. That is, I think, I think a lot better than the other the other dragons that we've seen. Holy shit. I mean, the only one we haven't seen yet, I want to say, is black. But, wow. Um, we got another Temple of the Dragon Queen with some extremely cool art. Um, we already had the classic module one, um, but it's very cool. Uh, let's see. We got Hema Pashar, uh, Rune Seeker, which we have seen before. Uh, let's see. Wild Shape. Uh, choose one. Until the end of the turn, target creature you control that has uh, that um, has that base power and toughness becomes that creature type and gains that ability. Uh, I get it, it's really cool and really thematic. Um, I don't know, I like it. I got another Zariel. Uh, this one is full art. Is that what it's called when there's no border? Borderless? I don't know. Um, this is different art than the other Zariel that we opened earlier yeah um so that's cool oh you son of a bitch god damn it uh so volo is here let's see hmm oh anyways um volo guide to monsters you son of a bitch um he is two plus a blue and a green uh, whenever you cast a creature spell that doesn't share a creature type with a creature you control or a creature card in your graveyard, copy that spell. A copy of a creature spell becomes a token. Wow. I mean, I hate Volo with every ounce of my being, but I feel like you could make a very fun deck with Volo as a commander. Because, like, you could get a lot of weird-ass monsters out in double them. I mean, oh, this one's pretty fucking good. And he's uh, shiny, so that's cool. And we got this Undead Slayer. Uh, two and one white for a 2-2. Two, two. Um, spend one white and tap to exile skeleton, vampire, or zombie. Holy shit. Okay. Hmm. That seems pretty good. Like some turning undead shit right there. All right. Two Zariels. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, what do we got here? Um, I have no idea, but it looks pretty cool. Some kind of druid situation here. It is Circle of Dreams druid. All right, we got a sparkly land, uh, which is pretty cool. 
And, ooh, Pixie Guide. Pixies are blue and not green. Hmm. Okay. Uh, let's see. They are one and a blue for a uh, one three. Well, that's a sturdy ass pixie. Uh, flying. Grant an advantage. If you would roll one or more dice, instead roll that many dice plus one and ignore the lowest result. Now, it's my understanding that in magic, effects with similar shit does not stack. Um, so, I guess that's kind of cool. Um, so, oh, wait, sorry. Stuff with similar effects does stack. So, if you had another card that allowed you to roll advantage, you would just keep adding more and more d20s. You roll, like, a shitload of d20s and take the best result. And that's kind of cool. Um, definitely in a the blue-black dungeon-delving deck that I'm thinking of, a uh, pixie guide would be pretty cool. Plus, this kind of, quote-unquote, classic art, I just think it's really really good looks really cool all right what do we got here uh you find a cursed idol uh choose your own adventure uh smash it destroy target artifact lift the curse destroy target enchantment dope dope uh steal its eyes create a treasure token and venture into the dungeon wow that's a good card that's like a lot of cool things you could do uh we got a half elf monk uh, this half-elf monk is a human elf. It is three and one white. It has vigilance, which is dope. Stunning strike. Uh, one and a white. Tap it, and you tap target creature. Checks out. And it's a one-four. All right, we got another Knoll Hunter. Uh, we got another one of these Kalein, uh Reclusive Painters. Ooh, Displacer Beast um, with the quote-unquote modern art. Not the not the coolest Displacer Beast art I've ever seen, but it's all right. Um, all right, let's keep going. Ooh, Blink Dog. Okay, so two and one white for a 1-1. One, one. has Double Strike. That's a cool way to do it. Um, and it has Teleport. Um, three and a white. Blink Dog phases out. That's cool. It's also very cool art for a Blink Dog. That looks really cool. Yeah. We gotta update all our tokens, y'all. Um, Hoarding Ogre. Uh, let's see. Three and a red for a 3-3. Three, three. Whenever the Hoarding Ogre attacks, roll a d20. Uh, one to nine, you get a treasure. That's pretty good with all the shit. Oh, wow. All right. 10 to 19, get two treasure. And 20, you get three treasure. Okay, yeah, there's a lot of cards that would like the you in their deck. Ah, another Volo. Okay, Dragon Turtle. Uh, let's see, one and two blue for a three five. Mm, okay, uh, Dragon Turtle has Flash, which is dope. Uh, drag below. Um, yeah, that's a low cost for a strong creature. I wonder if it does something bad here. Um, drag below. When the dragon turtle enters the battlefield, tap it, and up to one target creature an opponent controls, they don't untap during their controller's next untap steps. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Um, why it's very strong and flash for only three mana. Uh, let's see. Hobgoblin captain, but sparkly. And an advertisement. I didn't even get like a token. That's rough. Okay. All right. All right. What do we got here? Ooh, that's pretty cool. I think this is meat in a tavern. Yep, that's meat in a tavern. We've already seen that one. Uh, let's see. Oh, that's really cool. These land cards are really neat because a lot of them are just like not what they say they are like this is it's a swamp but it's you know like a dungeon in the underdark it's really cool uh we've got old school art lurker and they are green that makes sense um let's see they are just a horror hmm, yeah uh lurking roper doesn't untap during your untap step but whenever you gain life you untap lurking roper Hmm. I guess a 4-5 for only 3 mana 
I guess that I guess that checks out. Um, but plus it's green, so you're gonna be gaining life all the fucking time, anyways. Uh, cursed idol we already looked at. Half elf monk, which is super duper cool. Uh, let's see, null hunter, dragon's disciple. Is this the one that um that Bahamut was looking for? I think it is. Maybe. Dragon's Disciple is a human monk. Um, as Dragon's Disciple enters the battlefield, you may reveal a dragon card from your hand. If you do, or if you control a dragon, Dragon's Disciple enters the battlefield with a plus one, plus one counter on it. Uh, dragons you control get Ward 1. Oh, uh, he won Way of the Open Hand, monk. Okay, got it. Uh, it's 1-3. That's mm, pretty cool. Uh, we got another white dragon. Uh, oh, we got the black dragon. That's cool. Um, so Black Dragon actually more expensive than the other dragons we've seen. Uh, five and two black. That's rough. Uh, he's a flying 4-4. Acid Breath. When Black Dragon enters the battlefield, target creature and opponent controls gets negative three, negative three until the end of turn. Oh, thank you, Red Jamma X. This is scared, scared the shit out of me. Um, thank you. Uh, Black Dragon... Ah, man. It's just not. I mean, Green Dragon. I'm, I'm gonna just say it. I think Green Dragon's the best of the of the five dragons. Uh, Green Dragon's like no joke. All right, let's see what else we got. Oh, Owl Bear. Uh, I think that's like the first card we looked at. Uh, Trample and Keen Senses, which is nice. Draw a card. It is a little price for a four four, but not too bad. Secret Door is an artifact creature wall. I don't know what Defender does. I have no idea what Defender does. Uh, but it's 0-4 and only costs 1. Uh, there's also an ability for 4 and a blue. Venture into the dungeon. Uh, activate only as a sorcery. Defender means it cannot attack, only block. Oh, okay, that makes sense for a wall. Okay. Um, yeah, so this is spammable, I guess. So once you have enough mana, this secret door... You go, you go ham on a dungeon. That's pretty nice. All right, hey, we finally got another class card. Um, it is the monk. It is white and blue. Um, the second spell you cast each turn costs one less to cast. That's pretty cool. Um, when this class becomes level two, return up to one target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. That's all right. It's cheap to level up though. Uh, let's see. Level 3, at the beginning of your upkeep, exile the top card of your library. For as long as it remains exiled, it has... You may cast this card from exile as long as you've cast another spell this turn. Hmm. Hmm. Not 100% understanding the design choices for these monk abilities at all, but... I think you could do some cool shit with it. Uh, you happen upon a Glade, uh, shiny edition, and, oh no, somebody tore the card. Uh, oh yeah. Um, and then spider token. Yeah, they got stunning strike on, like, the monks, but not on the monk class, um, which is kind of lame. This is the deck, or the, sorry, the booster that Red claims is going to have the good shit in it. So let's see what happens. All right. Uh, there is an amazing Hydra art by Wayne Reynolds. Uh, good to see him uh, doing some Dungeons & Dragons work again. Pathfinder. Stealing their, steal, stealing everything. Even their, even the artist. Um, yeah, so that's beautiful. He always does beautiful Hydras. And Dwarves. He does do beautiful work. Alright, uh, we got Islands we don't need. We got Clattering Skeletons with the uh, OG style art. And the OG style art actually looks really cool. And let's see. We've got Charmed Sleep. Uh, one and then two blue. Enchanted a creature. When Charmed Sleep enters the battlefield, tap Enchanted Creature. Enchanted Creature doesn't untap during its controller's untap step. Okay. Um, Soul Knife Spy is an elf rogue for blue. Two and one blue. When Soul Knife Spy deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. That's three, two. That seems pretty good. Uh, Scion of Stygia, we've already looked at. Reaper's Talisman. Only costs one black. It's an equipment card. 
whenever equipped creature attacks, it gains death touch until the end of turn. Uh, whenever equipped creature attacks alone, defending player loses two life and you gain two life. Uh, that seems pretty good. Uh, we got another Drider, uh, which Driders were cool. Uh, Divine Smite is an instance, one and one white. Target creature or planeswalker an opponent controls phases out. Um, if that permanent is black, exile it instead. Wow, that's that's pretty cool. Um, another Soul Knife Spy in the same pack. Uh, what do we got here? Uh, the Black Staff of Waterdeep. This is a legendary artifact. It costs one blue. You may choose not to untap the Black Staff of Waterdeep during your untap step. Uh, you may animate a walking statue for one and one blue and tap. Another target non-token artifact you control, including these treasure tokens that are going to be all over the fucking place, um, becomes a 4-4 artifact creature for as long as the Black Staff of Waterdeep remains tapped. Activate only as a sorcery. That's pretty neat. Okay. Um, the actual deck of many things. A legendary artifact. Um, Alright, so it's got five cost it's a legendary artifact it's colorless you spend two mana and tap it to roll a d20 subtract the number of cards in your hand if the result is zero or less you must discard your whole hand uh let's see one to nine return a card at random from your graveyard to your hand uh draw two cards Put a creature card from any graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. When the creature dies, its owner loses the game. Well, the only way you're going to get that is if you have no cards in your hand and you roll a nat 20. Hmm. Okay. Uh, then we got Paladin's Shield is a shiny uh, one and one white. It has flash. When a paladin shield enters the battlefield, attach it to target creature you control. Uh, equip creature gets plus zero, plus two. Or you could equip it manually if you, I guess, hate yourself. Uh, and then another treasure token. I mean, it had the deck of many things. That's pretty cool. And the black staff awarded it. Uh, let's see. We got that half elf monk on a signature card. That's pretty cool. I think that's the half of monk. Yeah. And then we've got uh mountain. Looks pretty cool. And then we got a genie wind seeker alternate art again. And charm sleep again. Soul knife spy again. Simon Sigi again. Wild shape again. Druid class again. Uh another Gretchen Twitch Hollow or Twitch Willow with different art. Man, how many different arts do they make for cards nowadays? Uh, Delver's Torch. It is a one and a white. Uh, equipment. Equipped creature gets plus one, plus one. Whenever equipped creature attacks, venture to the dungeon. Oh, okay. Uh, equipped uh, three, attached target creature to equip as a sorcery. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, Shesra Death Whisper again. Uh, but different art this time. Uh, Gelatinous Cube. Uh, which we'd seen the art card for, but not the actual creature. So this should be pretty cool. Um, two and two black uh, for a 4-3. And Gulf, when Gelatinous Cube enters the battlefield, exile target non-ooze creature. And opponent controls until Gelatinous Cube leaves the battlefield. And Dissolve, X plus black... Uh, is it trigger, I guess? Put target creature card with mana value X exiled with gelatinous cube into its owner's graveyard. Oh, wow. That's extremely thematic. So they have a limited amount of time to get rid of the gelatinous cube to get back their creature before you eat eat their creature. That's beautiful. All right. Um, inspiring Bard. Uh, which we've seen before, but shiny. And then Dungeon of the Mad Mage, which we've seen before. And an adorable Gerblin. Oof. All right. Uh, let's see what else we got. Mm -hmm. uh, we got Beholder Art. 
It's one of the one of the strangest beholders I've seen, but still pretty cool. Uh, we got a forest. Uh, we got another celestial unicorn. Uh, Arcane investigator. All right, this is an elf wizard. So many elves, but I guess that's Dungeons and Dragons. Um, one and a blue as a two one. Um, it costs a lot to activate their ability. Search the room. Uh, one to nine, six mana. One to nine, you draw a card. Uh, Ten to twenty, look at the top three cards of your library. Put one of them in your hand, and the rest of the bottom of your library in any order. Uh, Dijin Wind Seer with Modern Art. Uh, Pixie Guide with Modern Art. Uh, Demi Gorgon's Clutches. Target opponent, uh, two colorless and a black. Sorcery, target opponent discards two cards, mills two cards, and loses two life. Well, that's a big fuck you. Hmm. Man, black cards. Kind of mean. It's kind of mean. Um, two, let's see, moon blessed cleric. We got two and a white. It is another half elf. We got a human elf cleric. Uh, it is a three, two, which is pretty good for two colorless and a white. Uh, Divine Intervention. When Moonblessed Cleric enters the battlefield, you may search your library for an enchantment card, reveal it, and then shuffle and put that card on top. Wow! That seems really good. Okay. That's, yeah, that seems really good. And following that up, we got the Cleric class, finally. Uh, let's see. Cleric class only costs one to equip. If you would gain life... You gain that much life plus one. Oh. Uh, and then it's very expensive to level this up. Holy shit. Um, whenever you gain life, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature control. Very good. Um, when this class becomes level three, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield, and you gain life equal to its toughness. I would say that this is very nice. Yeah, Claire class is good. Uh, we've seen this one... Death Priest of Mercool. All right. This is a Tiefling Cleric. Uh, two and two black for a two, two. Uh, let's see. Skeletons, vampires, and zombies you control get plus one, plus one. At the beginning of your end step, if a creature died this turn, you may pay one. If you do, create a one, one black skeleton uh, creature token. Wow. I, I take it from the meaning that you can't do that more than once. Because it says, at the beginning of your end step, if a creature died this turn, you may pay one if you do. I mean, I feel like that only happens once, based on the wording. I don't know. I mean, it'd be pretty awesome if it, it's just any creatures that died, you pay one and you get a skeleton. Oh, look, it's there he is! There he is, guys! Z there he is! Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, there he is. Anyways, um... Xanathar, Guild Kingpin. I didn't care if we got him or not, honestly. It's like, whatever. It's not even... It's, it could have been anything. Um, so, four colorless, a blue, and a black. He's a legendary creature. He's a beholder. It's my boy. It's true. I love him so much. Um, at the beginning of your upkeep, choose target opponents until the end of the turn. <laughs> Listen to this shit. Listen to this shit I'm about to say. At the beginning of your upkeep, choose target opponent. Until the end of the turn, that player can't cast spells. You could look at the top of their library any time. You may play the top card of their library, and you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast spells this way. I mean, what an asshole. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's amazing. He's very expensive for a commander, though, right? Like, it's six mana, because every time your commander gets sent back to the commander zone, it's two more mana. Uh, to get these assholes back out. I guess if you had a black and blue deck that was focused on treasure generation, which seems to be a recurring theme with blue and blue and black, uh, you could afford afford him. But what what an amazing ability! You basically just just ruined someone's life. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. I this was honestly the card that when I saw it on Twitter, I was like. Okay, <laughs> like, I'll, I'll check it out. Because I was like, what an absolute bastard of a card. Mm, good stuff. So, very happy. Um, Orb of Dragonkind. Oh, shit. In D&D, &D, 
in actual D&D, this is a very powerful artifact. So per Butler log, this is going to be terrible. Uh, let's see. One and a red for an artifact. Uh, spend one red and tap. Add two mana of any combination of colors. But you can only spend this mana to cast dragon spells or activate the abilities of dragons. Okay. And then spend one red and tap and sacrifice the Orb of Dragonkind. Look at the top seven cards of your library. You may reveal a dragon card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. I mean, I mean, it ain't great. It, it, it counts as a rare card, too. It's a rare foil card. Yikes. Okay. All right. Hmm. Oh, and there was like uh, Lost Mine of Vendelver so, with a skeleton. All right, all right, all right. Ooh, classic Beholder art card. I honestly don't understand the appeal of the art cards. Like, I can look at art on my phone or the computer. I don't know why I need it on a, on a card. Uh, we've got another forest, uh, an Underdark Forest. Fuck yeah. And, ooh, we got the Loathsome Troll, but with the classic artwork. Damn, that looks horrifying. Look at its little left arm is still regenerating. Oh, man, that's cool. Uh, thematically, this is one of the... I mean, so many cards are, are designed with with such a good theme for Dungeons & Dragons. But that one was, was a really good one. Uh, Arcane Investigator, we've already seen. Another Genie. Another Pixie Guide. Sudden Insights. Uh, four and two. Draw a card for each different mana value among non-land cards in your graveyard. I think we've looked at that before. Wizard class, we've looked at before. Magic Missile. Um, Elter Guard Ranger. Another half elf. Um, four, four colorless and one green. Uh, for a four one. Uh, it has reach. When they enter the battlefield, create a 2-2 two, two green wolf creature token. Hmm. Yeah, no. Uh, what do we got here? Valor Singer again. Uh, Dancing Sword, uh, which is one and white. A lot of white artifacts. A lot of white artifacts. Um, this is more equipment. Creature gets plus two, plus one. When a quick creature dies, you may have Dancing Sword become a 2-1 Construct Artifact creature with Flying and Ward 1. If you do, it is no longer an equipment card. Ah. Interesting. And thematic. Alright, that's pretty cool. Uh, yet another white dragon. This time it's shiny. And more random bullshit uh, minigames. Alright. Let's see what else we got. I think we're almost done. This took way longer than I thought it would. Um, let's see. Uh, we got a dude sitting in a chair. I, I don't know. Um, long rest, sure. Uh, Island. Uh, Rhyme Shield Frost Giants. Classic art. Oh, wow. That's adorable. I got shit. Uh, let's see. Ooh. That's a cool one for Contact Other Plane. Uh, three and a blue for an instance. Roll a d20. One to nine, draw two cards. Ten to nineteen, scry two, then draw two cards. That's very nice. Or nat twenty, scry three, and then draw three. Uh, let's see. Spiked pit trap is a colorless artifact for one, and it's flash. Um, but then it costs five and tap. Sacrifice spiked pit trap. Choose target creature, then roll a d. 20. Um, spike Pit Trap does 5 damage to that creature, or 10 to 20. Spike Pit Trap deals 5 damage to that creature, and you get a treasure token. That's okay. Um, Faraday's Fireball. Uh, let's see. Faraday's Fireball does 5 damage to target creature or planeswalker, and roll a d20. Um, it deals 2 damage to each player on a 1 to 9. A 10 to 20. Um, it does 2 damage to each opponent oh, 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 oh okay the first one's friendly fire the second one is not because fireball okay i get it uh we got this moon dancer again um whenever you gain life uh you get a plus one plus one counter and you can scry which is pretty cool uh that should be the quote on the card but i don't think they had any room 
Uh, we got the Lurking Roper again uh, with the Modern Art. Uh, rally Maneuver. Two colorless and a white. It's an instant. Target creature gets plus two, plus zero. Gains first strike until the end of turn. Up to one other creature gets plus zero, plus two. And gains lifelink until the end of the turn. Well, that's awesome. Uh, veteran a Dungeoneer. Oh, what did the Roper flavor text say? Oh, okay, hold on, hold on. Uh, you see Stalag tights. <laughs> Uh, grow down from the ceiling while stalagmites reach. Ah, okay, nice, nice, very cool. Uh, all right, let's see. Veteran Dungeoneer, this is a one we haven't seen before. How have we opened so many packs and we're seeing common cards for the first time? This it seems, I mean, I guess it's cool, but. Uh, three and a white. It is a human warrior. When veteran dungeoneer enters the battlefield, venture into the dungeon, and it's three four. Eh. Uh, den of the bugbear. I believe we already looked at this one. Um, it turns into a bugbear. And also, when it attacks, it makes gerblins, and it's still land. Uh, overall, pretty awesome. Uh, we got the Circle of Dreams Druid, which is a rare. It is an elf uh, and a druid. It costs three green to summon. Add one green for each creature you control. That's like a lot of mana, uh, potentially. Add one green mana for each creature you control by tapping it. Holy shit. Uh, the realms protected by druids of the Circle of Dreams are gleaming. Uh, fruitful places where dream and reality blur together. And the weary can find rest. Alright. Um, improvised weaponry. Uh, it's a red, two, and one red sorcery. Improvised weaponry deals two damage to any target. And you create a treasure token. Okay. It's kind of cool. And we got uh, a noggle hedge maze. Which I guess is from a previous set. I, I don't know. It's a red, blue creature. When Noggle Hedge Mage comes into play, you control two or more islands. You may tap two target permanents. When they come into play and you have two mountains, you may deal two damage to target player. Okay. Alright, let's see what else we got. Uh, we got an Etten. That's some dope art for an Etten. It's not an actual Etten card. It's just the art for the card. But Ettens are awesome, so... That's cool. Comes with a little stack card in the back. Uh, planes. Okay. Uh, another old school beholder. Uh, contact other planes. Spike Pit Trap. Faraday's Fireball. Iron Golem. We haven't seen you in a while. Chaos Channeler. Burning Hands. Hired Hexblade. Sudden Insight. Triumphant Adventurer. It is white and black. Wow. <laughs> I feel like that's uh they they're trying to tell you something there. Um death touch as long as it's your turn triumphant adventure has first strike. Awesome. Whenever triumphant adventure attacks venture into the dungeon. Okay, that's pretty awesome. Look at the art too. He's so so satisfied with himself. He's even got a mimic he's carrying. He doesn't even know he's got a mimic on his fucking shoulder. It's very cool art. Uh ooh, we got uh, full art, legendary creature, Eben Death the Dracolich. Uh, he is two colorless and two black. He is a legendary creature, zombie dragon. He is 5-2. He has flash and flying. Um, yet, despite having flash and flying, uh, he enters the battlefield tapped. Um, you may cast him from your graveyard. If a creature not named Even Death Dracolich died this turn. Well, that's pretty awesome. This is a, I guess, full art foil of this guy. Yeah. Uh, wow, you, you both said it at the same time. Yeah, this is what happened to him. Because you guys were bad dads. You guys were bad dads. No, no, no. That's what w would have happened to him if you guys hadn't been... Great co-parents. Uh, Alright, we're almost done. I swear. Uh, okay, we got some old school armor looking shit right here. 
And it's Iron Golem, I guess. Ooh, we got a Sparkly Underdark Forest. Ooh, we got a Full Art Blue Dragon, uh, which is lovely. Looks very cool. Uh, we got Swarming Gerblins again. Uh, let's see. Oh, a Brazen Dwarf. He is uh, red, one and red. He's a Dwarven Shaman, which again, there are no Shamans in 5th edition D&D, &D, but that's fine. Uh, whenever you roll one or more dice, um, Brazen Dwarf deals one damage to each opponent. That's kind of fun. Uh, let's see. Earth Cult Elemental is four and two... Uh, let's see. Siege monster. When Earth Cult Elemental enters the battlefield, roll a d20. One to nine, each player must sacrifice a permanent. Holy shit. Um, ten to nineteen, each opponent sacrifices a permanent. Uh, nat 20, each opponent sacrifices a two of permanence. And he's a six six. That's kind of cool. It's a risky move. Uh, hey, look at that. There's that fucking monk. That Bahamut was looking for. Monk of the Open Hand is an elf monk. Because why not? Like, we don't have enough fucking elves. Um, excuse me. Uh, it costs one white to cast. It's a 1-1. One, one. Flurry Blows. Whenever you cast your second spell each turn, put a plus one, plus one counter on Monk of the Open Hand. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's pretty cool. Uh, Ray of Enfeeblement is one black. It is an instant. Uh, target creature gets a negative four, negative one until the end of the turn. But if it's a white creature, it gets a negative four, negative four until the end of the turn. Uh, nice. Ooh, Warlock class. Neat. All right. Um, Warlock class is obviously black magic. Uh, let's see. At the beginning of your end step, if a creature died this turn, each opponent loses one life. Nice. Okay. Um, easy level two. When this class becomes level two, look at the top three cards of your library, put one of them into your hand, and the rest into your graveyard. What the fuck? Uh, and then very expensive level three, six and one. Um, at the beginning of your end step, each opponent loses life equal to the life they lost this turn. Wow. No wonder it's expensive. Mm. Man, somebody likes warlocks over there at the, at the Wizards of the Coast. Hey, it's Tarascalisk. There it is. Underdark Basilisk. Has death touch. That's it. But damn that art. God damn that art. Looks so good. Uh, Boots of Speed, which we've already seen. The Sphere of Annihilation, a rare artifact based on one of the most powerful artifacts in all of Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, I can't wait to see how strong this shit is. All right. Uh, it is black and X mana. Sphere of Annihilation enters the battlefield with X void counters on it. At the beginning of your upkeep, exile Sphere of Annihilation. All... Hold on. Hold on. At the beginning of your upkeep, exile Sphere of Annihilation. All creatures and planeswalkers with mana value less than or equal to the number of void counters on it, and all creature and planeswalker cards in graveyards with mana value less than or equal to the number of... Wait, 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 wait. I'm trying to understand. At the beginning of your upkeep... Okay. Sphere of Annihilation enters the battlefield with X counters. Okay, I'm there. I'm there. At the beginning of your upkeep... Exile, Sphere of Annihilation. So they have one turn to get rid of the Sphere of Annihilation. Okay. Uh, all creatures and planeswalkers with mana value less than or equal. Mana value is the shit in the top right corner. Got it. Um, okay. And all creatures and planeswalker cards in graveyards, they all get, they all get exiled. Holy shit. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Holy shit. They're like, no, no, no. They're in the graveyard, so they're fine. And like, and like Sphere Annihilation's like, nah. Nah, I didn't. Get rid of that shit. Get it out of here. Uh, we got Horde Robber, which we haven't seen yet. It is a Tiefling Rogue. Uh, one colorless, one black. Whenever Horde Robber deals combat damage to a player, create a treasure token. That seems very good. And then we've got a zombie. All right, we have three more packs. 
So I don't have high hopes of uh, anything else. We've got some, we got some pretty cool cards. Um, but I guess I'll just buy the cards individually from now on. Uh, there's a Mimic that's looking pretty dope. But it's just an art card. And we got uh, some Mountains. Uh, we got the Neverwinter Dryad uh, Old School Art. Looking very 1980s in there. Uh, Swarming Gerblins again. Brazen Dwarf. Earth Cult Elemental. Lulsome Troll. This dude again. Targnar. Demon Fang Knoll. Ray of Frost. Shortcut Seeker. Hmm. Three and a blue. Human Rogue. Whenever Shortcut Seeker deals combat damage to a player, venture into the dungeon. Okay, that's cool. Um, another 50 feet of rope. Uh, oh, the Bard class. Nice. Uh, for sure. For sure, Red. Um, bard class is red and green. Hmm. I guess because they're like spicy and full of life. Hmm. Uh, let's see. Legendary creatures you control enter the battlefield with an additional plus one, plus one counter. Okay. Okay. Checks out. Uh, easy level two legendary spells you cast cost red and green one red and green less. Um, mm, okay, okay. And then level three, which is still pretty affordable. Whenever you cast a legendary spell, exile the top two cards of your library. You may play them this turn. Hmm. I mean. I mean, compared to Warlock, I mean, I mean, it's not very, it's not very cool. Kind of, kind of hurts my feelings a little bit. Oh well. Uh, what do we got here? Hoarding Ogre, uh, shiny edition, and then this old school thing from another set. Quest for the Holy Relic. I don't know. Whenever you cast a creature spell, you may put a quest counter on the quest for the Holy Relic. Remove five quest counters and sacrifice it. Search your library for an equipment card. Put it in the battlefield and attach it to a creature control. Ah, it's an awful lot of work. All right. All right. Let's see what else we got. <laughs> uh, let's see. <clears throat> All right. We got the same um, Hydra art card as before. Uh, we got a Schwamp. Oh, we got Manticore. I haven't seen that before. Um, three colorless and a black. Okay. Kind of thought Manticore would be red, but whatever. Uh, let's see. Flash plus flying. Tail spikes. When Manticore enters the battlefield, destroy target creature and opponent controls that was dealt damage this turn. Okay, that's kind of cool. Uh, hoarding Ogre. We've already seen. Spoils of the Hunt. Uh, target creature control gets plus one, plus zero. Until end of turn for each mana from a treasure... Wait, target creature control gets plus one plus zero until end of turn for each mana from a treasure that was spent to cast this spell. Hmm. Huh. Okay. Then the creature deals damage equal to its power to a target creature the opponent controls. Okay. Uh, we've seen this before. Oh my god. Shesra. You're, you're... I have like five of you or something. Uh, power word, kill. Yeah, like, there's so many other things that use treasure so much better than that card. Uh, power word, kill is only one and then a black. It is an instant, and it destroys target non-angel, non-demon, non-devil, non-dragon creature. Okay. Okay. Uh, then we got this Death Priest of Mirkul again. Uh, Spare Dagger. Um, a common equipment card. One colorless. A cool creature gets plus one, plus zero, and has... Whenever this creature attacks, you may sacrifice Spare Dagger. When you do, this creature deals one damage to any target. Okay. Uh, zombie Ogre. Haven't seen this before. Three and then two black. At the beginning of your end step, if a creature died this turn, venture into the dungeon. That's kind of neat. Uh, the ranger class. I don't think we've actually seen the ranger class yet. When the ranger class enters the battlefield, create a 2-2 green wolf token. Classic. 
Easy level 2. Whenever you attack with a plus 1, plus 1 counter on target attacking creature. Well, that seems really good. What the fuck? Okay. Oh, I get it, because Ranger can't be good in 5th edition. So they try to make up for it in Magic the Gathering. Okay. Um, <laughs> right? Uh, and then an easy level 3. You may look at the top card of your library anytime you want. Uh, and you may cast creature spells from the top of your library. What the fuck? So you telling me... You're telling me that the Bard is is that much hot garbage. And then you gave Ranger... Well, it's also a rare card, too. But uh, Then we've got Faraday, the Devil's Chosen Shiny Edition. Um, let's see. Dark Ones, Own Luck. Whenever you roll one or more dice... Um, Faraday, Devil's Chosen, gains Flying and Menace until the end of the turn. If any of those results was a 10 or higher, draw a card. Okay. That's still pretty cool. I certainly wouldn't make her a commander, but still pretty cool. Alright, here's our last pack of cards, and then I am done. Uh, so we got this dope troll uh, art card, so that's cool. And we've got um, the Maelstrom, which is kind of awesome. And let's see, we've got Pegasi, another Hoarding Ogre, the Spoils of the Hunt that we just saw, this horrible ranger, Red Dragon that we've only seen one other of, but it was the same art, uh, Dungeon Map, which was really, really good, in my opinion, if you were doing a dungeon delving. We got a Purple Worm again. All right, haven't seen this guy. Priest of Ancient Lore, two and one white, Dwarf Cleric. When a Priest of Ancient Lore enters the battlefield, you gain one life and draw a card, and it's a 2-1. That's pretty good. I guess. Um, I mean, I don't know. He's a common card. Uh, true Polymorph, which we've seen before. And some dude named Morden Kanan. Hmm. Uh, let's see. Morden Kanan is four uh, colorless and two blue. He's a legendary planeswalker, Morden Kanan. Uh, his loyalty of five, and Jesus Christ, you have an ability to cost ten loyalty? What do you do, man? Um, let's see. Draw two cards, and then put a card from your hand on the bottom of your library. Okay, kind of kind of cool. Um, spend two loyalty to create a blue dog illusion creature token with this creature's power and toughness are equal to twice the number of cards in your hand. That part of good. Uh, I take it to mean that you can make as many of these blue doggos as you like. Um, negative 10. Exchange your hand and library. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hold. Okay. I'm trying... I, I understand what I read. I'm just trying to understand what I read. You know what I mean? Like, you just... So, so it's... So you're playing Commander. <laughs> you're playing Commander, and you have, you know, I don't know. You have, like, six cards in your hand, whatever. And you just trade for your entire deck of, like, oh, no, let's say, like, 70 cards. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, wow, that's bananas. Because, yeah, if you run out of cards, you, you lose the game. What the fuck? All right, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah, but but you have all of your cards. You have your entire hand. Uh, your entire deck is your hand. Oh, my God, that's wild. And then the doggos, if you, if you, have, a fi you have 50 fucking cards in your hand... Each doggo is 100 100. I, what? Anyways, um that's crazy. Uh wow. All right. I feel oof, wow. All right, and then we got Minimus Containment, which is I guess from I guess it's from this set. Uh enchant non-land permanent. Uh enchanted permanent is a treasure artifact. Um and then you could sacrifice it. Oh, that's fucked up. I could turn one of my little gerblins into a um 
into a treasure. Oh my god. That's amazing. Wow. Okay, so there were some pretty cool cards in there. Um, generally, I don't have very good luck with um, with anything related to, to gambling or RNG, so I don't make a big habit of buying um, packs of cards. Um, I usually just seek out the cards that I want. But for, <clears throat> for nostalgia and for fun, I thought it would be pretty cool. Um... Yeah, I thought it'd be pretty cool to like take a look at some of these cards, kind of relive um, the joy of opening a bunch of a bunch of magic cards. Um, so yeah, that was pretty fun. Um, I think that yeah, I think I agree with a lot of people. There's there's not a lot of super strong cards um, in in this set, but some of the ones that are strong are are really strong. Um, I'm happy we pulled Xanathar. That was cool. Um, got a, got a couple of really, really nice cards. Uh, just a couple. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, it's fun. So thank you everybody for hanging out while we open some magic cards. This is the last day of my staycation. So, um, regular schedule will resume tomorrow with prepping for Odyssey of the Dragon Lords Prime and then running, uh, Odyssey Prime. And uh, so on and so forth. Uh, we'll be we'll be building our Gothic Horror World on Tuesday. We'll be playing Rhyme of the Frost Maiden on Wednesday. We'll be doing Skull and Shackles on Thursday. We'll be playing Storm King's Thunder mini series, Cloud Maiden's Avarice. Uh, let's see, f on Friday, um, Saturday, we're going to be finishing. I hope finishing up Dark Alliance. So we're going to play that again, and then Sunday we'll be doing um, Mythic Odyssey. Uh, to answer your question, Butler Log, the Odyssey Prime group has, I think, two two islands left. I want to say two islands left in Chapter 5. Um, but they're, they're two biggies. They're two biggies. So they got two big islands left in Chapter 5. So, uh, But yeah, I really enjoyed my staycation. Um, it was... Uh, it was really good. It was really, really good. There was uh, there were parts of it that um, that were absolutely amazing. So, uh, but yeah, it's um, I don't know. Feels good to be doing D and D stuff. I, I snuck in some prep earlier today. I'm also working on um, a published adventure that I hope to have finished by the end of the month, and that'll be in the DMs Guild when I finish it. So that's kind of exciting to have my first published adventure ready. Um, but overall, uh, yeah, it's a good staycation, but excited to get back to, uh, get back to the grind and, uh, getting, getting some Dungeons and Dragons played. So, uh, so yeah, thank you everybody for hanging out and I will see you next time.